numbers go. Yo, I'm like an addict, do I gotta have it? I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit. If it moves, gotta grab it. Fuse like a magnet, lose won't have it till I'm doomed in a casket. I ain't playing, got a weird mind. If you work eight hours, I'ma work nine. If the shit tastes sour, you should taste mine. I'ma stay in power for a long time. Get up, nah, I ain't a quitter. Toss me the ball, I'm a really big hitter. Big picture, I'm a straight killer. Rise in the song to the highest bidder. Got juice, got gas, I'ma move fast. New shoes, new tracks, like who's that? I'm new, come back better than last. Yeah, it's a new me, never gonna look back. Never gonna look back. Cause damn, I was built to last. You move slow when I move fast. And that's facts. Only I can make a change. Slowly take a step today. I will never be the same. Cause that's what it takes. I just can't let you go Lord knows that I've tried to You said I was the only one No one likes being like to You made this mess and left me with the pieces Okay. 
the slow walk. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll go show up. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no Do so instinctive and so passionate. Every word I move so descriptive, like an adjective. I got a vendetta against people who patented being negative when you should be getting after it. I got facts over facts over tracks. This and that, spitting slow, spitting fast. I could roast, I could gas. Think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past and the pettiness. A reflection of the emptiness. Hilarious, you think you're worth my time. You're delirious, mysterious because you are behind the fake exterior. Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior. Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words, you can say them back I want you to feel free from the chains that last And to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah Now that I've been put through hell I never got anyone's help I had to do it all myself I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up Statement. Gonna learn the consequence of being incompetent. Mental health is confidence. Dreams and some honestness. I'm not here to save the day. That's for you to take away. I could play a million mind games, but instead of say something not illogical, something that is topical, rub it on and watch it go. Make yourself unstoppable. Dreams are irresponsible, but they're always possible. If you just believe, you could be so remarkable. Thoughts in my head, a collage, and they spread. I'll be great one day, going off of my meds. No, I'm not giving up. No, I'm not giving in. I will make it to the top, taking off. And the wind, I gotta make it I'm saving every day to taste it I'm patient, but my mind, it can hardly take it I'm chasing a dream that I've had for several ages of bacon Modern kingdom for the taking Now that I've been put through hell I never got anyone's help I had to do it all myself I don't ever slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up Well, hello, chat. Nice to see y'all here. Hopefully y'all doing pretty good because we got content for fucking today. And I do mean today. <clears throat> you know, usually I could have sprung this out, sprung this out a little longer with more songs. But I was like, nah, nah. I think we're at a good point to where we could get started. What do you guys think? Should we? Should we just dive right into the salt? Nah, you love it here, Klutzy. I don't know what you're talking about. Same to you, Pidgey. Same to you. And hey, yo, dude, I'm loving those freaking dog videos. Well, the puppy videos, I should say. I freaking love them. Keep sending them my way. I'm, I'm going to try to find some of my Twitter page, too. But God knows my freaking you page is just filled with fanboys fucking... Absolutely going ballistic. Now, your boy over here has been finding some delicious salt. So why don't we go ahead and just show y'all what Gar has found. So besides this fucking lame brain right here, we've, uh, we've got a nice little selection over here. We've got, uh, we got the Suicide Squad guy, you know, kissing ass, you know, as usual, you know, him, uh, 
seeing the haters were right, you know, I will take that W perfectly fine, you know. We have also got uh, Harmon Smith over here, you know, him trying to dunk on Dead Space, you know, saying the Dead Space 2 remake is dead. And um, you know how Gar feels about that. Then we got Crap Gamer. Then we got, uh, oh, what's that? This dude hasn't been on the channel for a long while. I think I think even Klutzy knows this dude too. Like he tried to use his uh, what was it saying that he had some type of mental illness is why he spurgs out so much. And I'm just kind of sitting there like the dude doesn't have any symptoms of that. I think he's just cuckoo for the fucking cuckoo pups. And oh, we got some David Jaffe too. And uh, ooh, ooh, Gar found something new. Ooh. So which one sounds good to you guys? Y'all tell me. Shall we uh, so, shall we take care of Harmon Smith or should we take care of Expert Review, review Zone? Saying, uh, do not buy Hill Davis 2. Yeah, yeah, Clutzy. Yeah, yeah, I've been finding shit, bro. I, I got to send some of this shit your way because it's too much for me to, to cover by myself. Love it. I love it, chat. Y'all fucking say go for a fucking Harmon Smith's throat. Welcome to the family, son. Hey, welcome to the family. Thank you very much for doing it. All right, fam. So, yeah, it's a unanimous decision. Harmon Smith, we are going for that throat. Now, now, here's the big thing, though, fam. Are we going to do this one with, the you know, the bot thing, whatever the fuck he's fucking spurging out about? Or are we going to do the Dead Space 2 one? Now... I ain't going to say that we should do the AAA one over here with Grums on it first. But that Dead Space 2 one is really fucking hilarious towards the end. And I got to shout out Spec for bringing this one to my attention. Because the ending is really fucking hilarious. Oh, I know, Drew. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, I know. But I want to at least make you guys feel like you're invested, too. Thank you, Loran, for subscribing to the channel. We're getting close to 10K ever so every single day. So thank you very much. Ah, oh, chat, you know how to hit the right fucking spot with Gara. Y'all know how to hit it. And what would it be without some anarchy on this fucking channel? Now, wouldn't it, chat? Wouldn't it be a Gara channel, wouldn't it? I really got to stop pausing at the wrong times. It looks like he just nuttered buttered to a fucking... Uh, okay, no, no. We're going to start. We're, let's get going, fam. Oh, no, no, hardcore gamer bros. I thought Dead Space 1 Remake was one of the best games ever made. I thought... Nobody said it was, dumb shit. Everybody's been saying it's a very, very good remake. Hell, even the bigger YouTubes were saying it. Even Mudahar, some ordinary gamers were saying it was a really good remake, which honestly really surprised the hell out of me. But I mean, you know, Turbo Nerd's going to do what Turbo Nerds do. This was a Game of the Year contender. I thought this was a huge success story for EA and Visceral Games. Oh my fucking God. Visceral didn't even make this game. You absolute Tartar. You absolute Jar Jar Binks. Wait, I take that back. Jar Jar Binks don't deserve that disrespect. I thought Metroid Prime Remastered got destroyed by Dead Space Remake, even though they sold the same about same amount. I thought... Really? Really, Harmon? So where's the numbers at? Where's the numbers at? Well, please tell me where the numbers are at for Metroid Prime being sold on the Switch and then Dead Space Remake being sold. On the fucking charts, literally, when I made this first fucking video on him, literally, Metroid Prime was nowhere on those fucking charts. Dead Space 2 was number two on the charts above FIFA and Call of Duty for three months fucking straight. Metro Prime wasn't anywhere on that fucking scale. Okay, buddy? Okay? 
that Dead Space was going to bring a glorious new return to the Western survival horror space genre, right? I thought this was game was going to be a big deal. I, Hi, Devastator. I didn't think it would be canceled. Ha! They're not even going to produce a Dead Space 2 remake. Okay. Okay. So I, this is where it kind of confuses me, too, with especially fucking EA, guys. So supposedly that the Dead Space 2 remake wasn't even an idea, even though I've had a fucking email from EA straight up asking me, if we did a Dead Space 2 remake, would you buy it? And then EA's out here basically saying, oh, none of these rumors are true. We, we never even got past the idea stage, even though you fuckers sent a fucking, what was it? A, uh, oh my God, I keep forgetting what it is. Like a, uh, a survey out to everybody asking them, what the fuck? Let alone a new video game. Does it sound low? Here, let me crank it up a little bit. If it sounds low, let me crank it up just a bit. This, to me, is validated. This, to me, is another epic W in a long line of Ws from the Nintendo camp. Because not only was Dead Space not all that good of a game and oh how would you fucking know Harmon, when you've played nothing but nintendo products for the rest of your fucking life it wouldn't surprise me if he had a fucking nintendo flavored dildo in his fucking room just ready to penetrate himself at night wouldn't surprise me at all overshadowed by the far superior metroid prime remastered we are not how was it far superior to to being a remake Harmon, how? It's the same shit with updated visuals. That's all it is. They added nothing to the game. Okay, no, not no, no, like uh, special different endings, different weapons that you could use. They absolutely did nothing to change it. I'll bet you fucking anything. This man didn't even complete fucking Metroid Prime. Unlike me over here, I did. I ble beat a Dead Space, uh, Dead Space remake twice. Both got the fucking crazy ass ending and the regular ending which is absolutely fantastic i fucking loved it secondly i'm gonna fucking say this now i'm gonna bet money right now that this motherfucker doesn't even play on pc so i don't know how he can even comment that was a there was a shitty fucking pc game or exclusive game oh i love it when i'm fucking streaming Uh, anyway, give me a hot minute real quickly, guys. I got to fix something real quick. I love it when it happens right when I stream. Spat, keep him in line. Don't make me come find you.
Come on, Chris. You wanna come in? You wanna come in and relax? You come in here. Okay. Yes, you're a good girl. Yes, you are. I wish I had a webcam so we could see you. Yeah. We can see you in all your beauty, too. Hey, hey, I see you fuckers in chat. What you do? What are you doing? What are you doing, Spec? What the fuck? Spec, you were in, you were in fucking, you, you were the one in the control, Spec. You failed. What the fuck, Spec? New slogan. New slogans for Spec. Ban Spec. Needs to be banned. Hey, Devastator. Thank you for becoming part of the family. But yeah, it's it's my black lab. She was uh, okay. No, let me explain this real quickly. The reason why I left for a couple few minutes ago, uh, just to let you guys know, <laughs> if you're trying to surprise your significant other, make sure your dogs aren't. Well, no, not your dogs, but their dogs aren't. You know, in the house and butt ass wild, and they're barking like crazy. Because my girlfriend tried to surprise me with something again on stream, and it did not work. Hey, well, I mean, that's fine, Vanguard. Not a big deal. <laughs> uh. Hey, Silent. Welcome, man. Welcome. So, uh, you know what, chat? Let's get back to it. Not even going to get a sequel. Keep in mind, we basically already have a guarantee that we're going to get Metro Prime 3 Remastered. So, Dead Space was and always has been in... <laughs> every time every time i see Harmon smith pause guys like <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the family pigeon mm -hmm. but anyway back on topic every time i see him pause all i think is that little meme of the little dial up going on top of his head Oh, Pidgey, you're not lying, bro. You are not fucking lying. He would definitely spend his fucking life savings and fucking family savings on that. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if he fucking got a dungeon below his, well, attic filled with, like, Nintendo stuff where he's, like, praying to a statue of Iowata, Iowata or Mario or something, and then he's got, like, this whole fucking room with, like, dildos and shit. I just wouldn't be fucking surprised. I would just be standing there like, yeah... Yeah, this this is the norm. This is the norm. Hey, man, hopefully you're doing good, Matt. Oh, yeah, disc like this. Like I said, if you guys want to watch that video, we'll we'll watch it. I haven't watched it yet, but I know I've been informed it's fucking bad. Inferior. Better yet. I might bring one of my longtime friends, Boomy, onto this to come watch it with me. She fucking hates Harmon. She hates Harmon with a fucking passion. To the far superior Metroid franchise. Again. This How is Metroid superior to Dead Space? Are you saying Metroid Prime's fucking scary? Because it's not. It's fun as fuck to play and blast aliens fucking heads open versus fucking Dead Space. It's more of a horror game. I mean, let, let's be honest. Like if you were even OK, let's put this in this perspective. OK, chat, let me ask you something real quickly. What would you guys prefer to be in? Would you prefer to be a Samus Aran in her universe or B, would you like to be Isaac Clarke in his universe? Which 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 one would you rather be? A fucking engineer that goes through the whole fucking universe dealing with these necromorphs that are just absolute horrid. Or B, would you rather be Samus Ran, a badass bounty hunter that's going to rip your fucking head off and make you eat your ass? Horror, horror, you stop it right now. It's a horror, you stop it. Uh, which one is that, uh, Black? Is it about the Fallout one?
Yep, I know it is Devastator, and I cannot wait for those fucking um, the final patch and the DLC to come out for those games. I love Remnant 2 and I love Grounded. Even though I don't play Grounded as much, but I've been what was played it like last week. Hey, Ultra, welcome to the family. Oh, wait, wait. Slimmy! Oh, no, no, it's Ducky. It's me's Ducky. Yeah, you know what? I don't know too much about the Fallout universe, but I have a basic understanding. So, I mean, fuck it. Why not, Black? Why the fuck not? Or I should say Cobra in this situation. Thank you. Thank you. Like, like, why the fuck would you want to be Isaac Clark in that situation? I would rather be Samus Ren. I'd be sexy as fuck in that armor. Mm-hmm. Swamp, someone's going to fucking clip that. I swear to God. This is, uh, it gets very tiring. Um, every single generation, seeing, like, the industry try and prop up some random IP to try and compete with Nintendo. You know, Dead Space has always been, like, a very very blatant example of that i remember when this game came out and people try who the fuck is trying to compete with nintendo so they have the biggest video game franchises in the fucking world good luck competing with them it's a suicide mission power world power world, i had no okay i'm gonna be completely honest chat power world fucking blew up okay when i first saw this i was like it's such a cool fucking game. I can't wait to play it, you know? But as soon as it got out to the main public, or I should say fucking Twitter, and it blew the fuck up, and they started making the Pokemon comparisons to it, I just sat there and started laughing like, oh yeah, Power World's gonna blow the fuck up, and they're gonna do some numbers because the Pokemon fanatics couldn't keep their fucking mouths shut. By telling you that, like, oh, so scary oh like you're not gonna want to explore everything it's so scary oh like they would try to do that and then you would play the game and you would realize it was basically just a worse version of resident evil 4 in space you know really it's a worse version than resident evil 4 really even though they borrow all no 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 even though dead space does borrow a lot of elements from resident evil 4 that's only the comparisons that you can have to it dead space 4 i in my honest opinion is just as good as resident evil 4 there are some really really good shit within dead space like let me tell you guys something first the first time i played dead space was in the game came out when i was in high school let me tell you guys something when my friend was telling me about Dead Space and how that game was, how the game functions and how the fucking necromorphs are and how far he got into the game, he finally got me to play the fucking game. And I was scared shitless when I first played it, okay? I booted the motherfucker up and I played it, okay? I just, I went for it. Fuck me. Fuck me. That shit scared me worse than Resident Evil 4. I, I kid you not, especially when I saw the Uber Morph, the one that regenerates its limb. I was a fucking rat in the corner, fucking scratching on the walls, kind of trying to get the fuck. I'm like, let me out. Let me, I don't want to be in. Let me out. And it's like, I probably died about eight times to that motherfucker before, before I finally figured out, oh shit, caught its fucking legs off, stasis the motherfucker, caught off another arm. Then it's going to delay it long enough for me to get the fuck out of there. I fucking love Dead Space. I really do. Just like how, like, Gears of War was a worse version of Resident Evil 4. In, like, this brown environment, you know? like it, It's like, these games have so many blatant problems compared to their superior Nintendo alternative. It, it's like, these games have so many blatant problems compared to Hold like, on. this brown environment, you know? Like, 4 in like this brown environment you know? Harmon get better lining please for the love of god you are projecting really fucking hard buddy it looks like you put the fucking shit stain fucking filter on for your whole video buddy mm. oh yeah arcane yeah okay no that's that's fair because you probably I, I don't know 
I was fucking stupid back then, okay? I was like, in high school, I was like fucking dumb. But when I played it, bro, that, that, that shit was an adventure, okay? Like, this is when I was in high school, too. Like, I was more worried about my academics, more worried about being pers- more personal in my life with, like, love interests. It's not that type of shit, you know? I was playing Halo and other games like COD, too, but I was more interested in school, you know? It's like these games have so many blatant problems compared to their superior Nintendo alternatives. Name the problems. The point where like, why would you ever even really support them? And of course, like Dead Space isn't the worst thing ever. Okay, like I do. Th- oh, oh, did you hear that, Chad? Did you hear what he said? He said Dead Space isn't the worst thing. Harmon, Harmon, buddy. Pal, amigo, the motherfucker I'm going to eventually shove into a fucking locker. Play the fucking game first or watch a Let's Play. Trust me, before but I'll even give you credit if you watch a Let's Play of it. OK, I'll, I'll give you credit. I'll give you credit if you watch a Let's Play. But I fucking doubt it. I really do. I think there are lots of. Lots of franchises that are objectively a lot worse, obviously. But at the same time, like, if these people are just religiously ignoring the best games in the genre, right? If these people are ignoring the far superior Metroid Prime games, like, why exactly would you take their opinions on Dead Space seriously? How are we ignoring Nintendo's exclusives again? I mean, you, you consider yourself a, a officiato of Nintendo products, but you can't even get the sub genres right for fucking Metroid Prime. One of the pro- one of the probably most underrated Nintendo products that ever came to the fucking market. One of my beloved franchises, too. I mean, if, if Simmons around. Oh, you know what? Thank you very much, Devastator. I didn't see that, bro. OK, yeah, yeah, I'll check it out. Don't worry. We'll do that today. Also, let me literally repeat this fucking games. Like, why exactly would you take their opinions on Dead Space seriously? Everybody could say the same thing about you. You can't even get the genre right with Metroid Prime, and you keep comparing it to Dead Space like a fucking moron. How does anybody take you seriously? Why would you take them seriously when they try to tell you that Dead Space is a masterpiece, right? It's a, it's laughable, and it always has been. Like this isn't, this is not a recent thing. This goes back all the way. This goes all the way back to the original Dead Space and just how overhyped and that game was. It was. Yeah, yeah. You know why it was hyped? Because we never knew that was an itch we needed to be scratched. Okay, that's why it was hyped. Just like with fucking Metroid Prime when it was fucking released. Oh, fuck. Look at these graphics. Look at how 3D it looks. Look at how it's like all these puzzles where I could fucking go around, find new boss enemies, get these new power-ups. Holy shit, it feels great. It was embarrassing then, and it was embarrassing with the Dead Space remake, with, with how desperately the community tried to present it as some big epic W for for ea when in reality um it was we, we actually get a good fucking story mode uh story gate based game instead of a fucking multiplayer slot with microtransactions it, it was a fucking w and then apparently from from what uh ea said that when dead space 3 not dead space 3 but dead space the remake was sold it blew their expectations out so I'm guessing with EA's expect expectations, maybe they were projecting it to sell over 4 million. So, I mean, that's pretty fucking good. I mean, hell, if you can get me to put some faith into the franchise that you release and make me buy the deluxe edition, you're doing something right. Bet, Glutzy. Bet. I'll look at that, man. It's just, it's EA, okay? They're never going to produce anything of value. Never. 
and yet and yet like every single time you get thrown a bone like this they they never produce anything good okay Harmon, they can produce really good fucking shit that remake they did dead space turned the whole fucking public opinion on on fucking ea okay and people were blown the fuck away i was blown the fuck away you made me sit there and want to play a second playthrough so I could get the alternate ending. You made me do that. Not every fucking video game that comes across my fucking plat or my, well, I should say my plate makes me want to do that. That says something though, too, especially with a Nintendo product about 98% of their games I've played does not want me to play like a second playthrough of them. Like, usually when I play a Nintendo game, I pick it up, and then I'm like, uh, okay, I mean, the game was fun. The only other game that made me want to play a second playthrough was Shin Megami Tensei Five, And I can't wait for that DLC to come out, because I had fucking fun with that game. I loved getting my ass kicked. I loved learning the new mechanics. I loved learning weaknesses. It was, I loved fusing the demons together. It was magnifico. Based, based. I agree with that, Klutzy. It really should be. People start salivating at the mouth about how, like, oh, is what's up, Max? Back? Is Dead Space coming back, or are they finally going to be? Well, I should say, Funk. Nintendo? What's up, like, Funk? No, it isn't going to happen. That is the reality. How do you know, Harmon? You're not sitting in there with the board, uh, the CEOs in the board meetings, listening to what they're saying. You're not fucking there for all we know ea is just like look this studio is doing a really good job with you know developing games and stuff right now we want to take this studio put them into other areas where we need help with other games like the iron man game and we want this game to be really fucking good and that's the reason why we're doing that if fucking ea came out and said that i would have just sat there like okay Okay, you know what? I, I can accept that. You want to make your guys more games more polished for us? Fine. What the fuck ever. But I mean, if you're not out ruling the fucking Dead Space 2 remake, fine. I'll wait a little longer. Perfectly fine with that. I have no problem with that. That we're in when it comes to Dead Space is that the series had a revival out of nowhere that was that got an, a lot of unwarranted hype and enthusiasm for the community. People tried to downplay the fact that it was woke. People tried people tried doing everything enthusiasm for the community. People tried to downplay the fact that it was woke. How was it woke, Harmon? Please fucking tell me. How in God's name was it fucking woke? Nah, we're doing this 4K. We're doing 4K live on this shit. Hold on. Because I see the absolute fucking media uh, idiots here doing the same bullshit too. Nah, nah, nah. We're doing this 4K right now. Where is that fucking post at? Ah, uh, did I forget to bookmark it again? Probably fucking Lee. Okay, here we go. This fucking retarded shit. This is the fucking shit that I'm going to fucking slap a motherfucker if I ever see them again. Okay? If I ever see a motherfucker post this retarded shit ever again, I'm going to jail. Okay, right here. This is one of their arguments right here with Nicole. This one like really pisses me off, okay? This one right here, guys, this little picture right here is from the Xbox 360 and the PS3 fucking era, right? This is where it used to, like, not have the best graphics, but it was fucking fantastic gameplay, right? So we think, yeah, that's that's pretty normal how the fucking a character would look right, right? Right, right, chat? Am I fucking crazy, right? 
But as soon as they bring it up to more visual pleasing and where it's more nice, crisp contrast, more lively shit, right? Now it's fucking woke and everything. Have these motherfuckers ever seen a nurse during when it's a pandemic where they're overworked and for constantly barely getting enough sleep nutrients in their body? They're going to fucking deteriorate. Hell, even this fucking Generation X, they look so much older than they're supposed to. It's because of the fucking stress and everything. I mean, for the love of God, for the love of God, chat, think about this for a second. You're a nurse, right? And you're aboard the Ishimura and you're being called on constantly. Every time you try to go take a break, every time you try to go take a nap, you're being called on. You, you're you not going to fucking look fantastic. You're not going to look like a 10 out of fucking 10. You're not. And especially you're on the fucking Ishimura too, where these necromores are everywhere and you're being kept out and you're slowly deteriorating. Your fucking mind's going crazy. Of course you're not going to look like a fucking Barbie doll. Oh, and Kendra too. I'm just like, are you, these people have to be fucking retarded. They have to be. Over here, Kendra's in a light fucking suit, you know, jacket, right? You know, it's just a, well, no, it's not, it's not a jacket, but it's like a, a button down t-shirt or something like that. I can't remember it. She's in a button down fucking t-shirt, right? And then on the left right here, she's in a fucking jacket. Have these people ever seen a fucking woman put a jacket on? Of course they're fucking tot tots aren't going to be out there in the fucking eighth or going, woo, like on the fucking right. Come the fuck on. Really? Really? Oh, oh, and this one. Like, really? We're, we're, we're more upset that these people got changed their fucking skin and one fucking character managed to survive, but then later down the fucking story, she gets absolutely fucking slaughtered like the other ones? Oh, cool. Cool. Huh. It's like that they said they were going to change the story up a bit, add a couple things, try to make it a little more lore accurate. And then this shit. This retarded shit right here. Asian and white people were replaced by black people in the Ishimura propaganda. So what you're trying to tell me is that they never existed in the universe? They're, they're not allowed to change things, just little things, that's it? You're more worried about that. You're more worried about that. Instead of the other big problems with the Dead Space remake, with the voice acting, with that needed drastic improvement, and especially how the head captain of that whole ship, how he died, I did not like that at all. I like when he died by the brute, not by his by his Necromore fan, friend. That, that one I did not like. Like, come on, guys. You have better shit to complain about than this sh stuff. 360 PS3 era graphics. Current fucking graphics. Come on. Function with your fucking head. People tried. People tried doing everything they could to bend over backwards to try to say this is one of the best remakes of the year when in reality it, was. it wasn't even the best remake of that month right it was not it was Harmon. it was it was fantastic and just because Mitchell Prime wasn't considered your best it doesn't fucking matter what you really think because we all know you're a fanboy oh here comes my favorite part chat in reality, it wasn't even the best remake of that month, right? It was not. It was not anything particularly special. I guess Nintendo's calling their fucking cuckoid right now so they could get that Glock Glock 9000. You're a joke, Harmon. All right, let's spice it up a bit. Chad, let's go and let's What's go listen to this fucking clown. Let's go listen to the different nude. Now, let me let me throw some context down for y'all. Let's let's get this party started. This dude right here is what we call the different nerd, right? 
This dude right here was the motherfucker that thought he was the big brain giga chad that was going to fucking simp for fucking Suicide Squad. Right? Mm Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. See, he was going to be the one to (laughs) say all the haters were wrong and uh, this game is absolutely flawless. And you imagine all this, right? Here's all this content that he's releasing for it. It's 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 absolutely amazing. So you know what? I'm gonna pick on two videos of his right now. Wait, Tarek, are you talking about the propaganda? Uh, the propaganda that was on the walls, saying that the uh, the companies were uh, kind of fucking everybody over. Which, if you actually paid attention to the, like, I'm not, I'm not jumping on your ass. I'm just kind of filling in the blanks real quickly. If you actually paid attention to the lore, the companies and even EarthGov were on, in on this shit. They knew about the fucking marker. So that dude writing that shit on the wall saying, fuck the government, fuck the companies. Yeah, yeah. That dude realized, oh, fuck, they're fucking us over. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Up, stop the presses. Just on the title alone, Suicide Squad knows who their target audience is. Check out the title. Suicide. Okay, Devastator, this dumbass is. This dumbass is. He's worse than fucking Reforged. Official Deluxe Edition trailer fit check. So all the people who spent 100 plus on this game, this is what's coming with it. Let's check it out. Oh, we get the closer that look That Batman of skin, skin for a fucking kill shot oh was or dead shot was good though. God. Rest was absolute fucking trash. Bro, that is awesome. Bro, fit check. The emotes go crazy. Oh, remember how that fucking early access go, buddy? How did that fucking go, chat? You remember that three day early access we got? Yeah, that was absolute dog shit. Couldn't log in. They had to give away free fucking, uh, what was it, premium shit to everybody. Yeah, how did that fucking go, nerd? The emotes go crazy. The emotes were fucking garbage. Oh, look at the weapon. Black Mass Notorious Weapons. Oh, and you know what's even funnier, though? If you didn't buy the premium edition, which I think you had to... You weren't going to get the best guns. You were going to get absolute trash. Bro, look at the effects. Oh my god. What is that? I'm excluding death from this situation because I respect the man's uh, you know, opinion in this situation. Shout out to him if he ever gets to see this stream. But this dude right here, right? This fucker right here. This fucker right here. I cannot fucking stand. Let me open up another window real quick, chat. But this dude right here, okay? This fucker right here went on a fucking twitting spree and fucking, what was it? It Made fucking videos saying that all the haters are wrong. All the haters have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. They're just doing this for cloud. Blah, blah, fucking blah, right? But look look where we are now, chat. Can, 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 can y'all, like, tell me? Look, look where we're at. Where's Suicide Squad currently? Dead in the fucking water where it belongs. What? Oh, and another little side gen, too. These type of people need to be gatekeeped out of the fucking gaming community. Like, I'm sorry, enjoy the games that you want to, right? But if you're going to completely deny fucking what people are saying after they've played the fucking beta and saying that it's not a very good game, you should really avoid it. Go fuck yourself and get out of my fucking hobby. See you guys tonight. Boom. Oh, that's the charms. 
Okay, so that's the weapon charms. They look really dope. Oh, charms. Nah, they clean. Charms. Charms that absolutely add nothing to the fucking game, and you can't even see them while you're shooting. Unlike Rainbow Six Siege. This is why I say these fuckers need to be fucking outcasted from the gaming community. They're clean. One battle pass token. Okay. Digital is cool. Oh, no one token for the swatches. battle pass. Okay. Whoop de fucking do. Woo. Mm. Okay. That's clean. Oh, my God. They gave the Spidey first effect. Hey, excuse me. What? Effect. God. They gave the Spidey first effect. They gave the spike. Boy, I would have loved that ability in fucking Suicide Squad. I would have loved that. But that was non existing. Like, are you kidding me? That wasn't even there. Non existing. First effect. The no shade color swaps are crazy. Shade color swap. The no shade color swaps are. So you fucks had the hammer in there, but never put it as a. Nope. Nope. I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. Are crazy. Oh my god. Pause, boomerang. <laughs> ah, that was clean. Y'all already know what it is. Don't forget to like, subscribe, TD. No, no, I don't think I will. Nope, no, 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 no. All right, here's the video, the main one, the main course. So, since everybody's got the contacts now that this was the biggest fucking simp for this game, well, he's got something to say. Let's get into it, fam. My people, today is a sad day to be a Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League player. At the moment... Oh, now it's a player. Okay. Okay. Y'all, it's crazy to say the haters were absolutely right. Not about the aspect on the actual game itself. Yes, the gamers were the, the, the haters that you like to say. We were right. We were all fucking right. And trust me, if it wasn't for the fan to refund my fucking uh, purchase of that game, which thank you very much if you're actually watching the stream, I would have fucking lost my mind. I would have probably gone more hardcore on that fucking game than I originally did on that fucking review. Like, I am talking about full-blown screaming at, like, how could you even fucking tarnish the legacy of the Arkham series? Like, mm. So, for me, the gameplay is fun. I like. How was it fun? How? How? The Division 2 was a lot funner than this. How? the innovation and how they do the bills there was no fucking innovation there was none zero zilch nada it was the one same fucking pony trick the characters the world the <laughs> the world the world the world was a fucking joke just like the junkler Boss fights, except Brainiac, were really, really fun. Brainiac? That's it? There, there was even problems with the other ones where they were just boring, where you were just continuously shooting them. The only ones that had a difference leading up to the boss battle was the Batman one, where you were, like, going after the fear toxins, but Batman was slowly coming after you, trying to stop you, building up that fear toxin in you. That one was fucking fun, okay? That one broke up the mononymous jumping around and shooting and shit. That one was actually fun. The other ones, trash. But if you guys are wondering, 
why hasn't nerd been uploading any suicide squad content check out what happens when i try to sign in okay i don't know if i believe him i really don't yes every time i sign in or attempt to sign in my game crashes oh like you weren't warned about this crap before buddy like like you weren't worried like we weren't warning you guys that the fucking live service aspect of this game is going to fuck you guys over no nah, the haters are wrong no nah, you don't need to listen to the haters no, nah, you're a fucking clown. Go buy yourself a damn clown suit. This has been going on for about five days now. Let me put it in perspective. I bought the $100 deluxe edition to play the game three days early. Womp, womp, womp. Sounds like a skill issue to me, buddy. Right. Now that I haven't been able to play five days, the people who bought the regular version are now past me and I can't even create any content anymore. <sighs> so honestly, my main concern, if you guys have been paying attention and watching my videos on Suicide Squad, was how will they support the game and how transparent they will be with the fixes. Oh, they haven't been transparent. Oh, they haven't. Especially with, uh, you know, there was supposed to be that free DLC we were supposed to get, you know, go get the Junkler for free. Nah, you got to do all this grinding, sign. You got to re-level up all your characters. Yeah, isn't that cool, guys? Playing the same shitty game over and over again, then get to a Brainiac that played the, that's the Green Lantern version and beating him. Yay! Unfortunately, it seems like my wishes are not going to be met. With a game being down for five days with hella people in your Discord and no responses from the devs, there's no major message on Twitter telling people they're working on a fix, it's nothing. So, what do you do in this situation? You get your fucking refund and tell them to go fuck themselves. That's what you do. If you have fucking standards, you get yourself a fucking refund. Tell them to go fuck themselves. And maybe, maybe I'll buy the game again when it's on a discount. A severe discount. More like when it's on fucking PlayStation Essential or fuck if I'm saying that PlayStation PlayStation Plus. That's what it's called. Come on, Gara. Or fucking Game Pass. And then maybe I'll play it again. But hey, you know, we have dis different standards here, huh, buddy? You enjoy the game, the game is fun. You want to, you know, check out the future content because as of now, with the core of the game being so dope, I do not want to see- Dope, dope, dope. Yeah, yeah, while well, you're playing fucking leapfrog with fucking weapons on yourself. Yeah, well, the, yeah, the gameplay is so fucking dope. You're, you're practically doing leapfrog with a fucking gun everywhere with special perks that kick in, especially those fucking modifiers where you're limited to fucking headshots too. Mm. Magnifico, my favorite game to play. Me to I would, I would rather put a car vault, uh, what is a car charger onto my fucking balls and zap myself, okay? Then play fucking Sue Squad ever again. I would rather fucking put fucking nipple clampers on myself and play a fucking full playthrough of fucking Redfall than to touch this game again. Did this game take a L, but with what they're doing right now. They are putting themselves right where the haters want them. So. Skill issue. That's what they did to themselves. We, they, they had a chance to prove us wrong. But they never did it right. Never did it right. Okay. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Minxie, get your Meow Meow Mix looking ass back in here. Now, you you time in that, okay? Okay? You you time in this one. Also, your girl tried to surprise me again today. She thought she was going to be cute about it.
All right, fuck it. I'm setting up a timer. Fuck it. Fuck it. No cussing for a solid 20 minutes. He really could have, Baron. All right, starting the clock now. Rock steady. I hope you watched this video. People, if you're having the same experiences, please put it out there because there's no information. There's nobody talking about what is actually being done. And the whole internet is talking about it right now. What are you talking about, dude? They are saying that they're sick and tired of these live services doing this to them, doing it to their customers because we paid an absorbent amount of money and they're not even respecting us. So what's the point? What, what's the point? Because these people aren't going to listen to us anyway. They're just happy that they have our money now. Now I'm assuming it's just because there's a good amount of people who can still play the game versus the ones who can't. So as of now, Oh, now you're sticking up for the little people now. No. <laughs> this dude is whack. I swear to God. Now you're more worried about the fucking long... Oh my God, no. No. Like, I'm sorry. They, they screwed up Suicide Squad hardcore. And we were telling everybody, hey, like, hey, look, this, this game is not what you think it is. It's uh, it's a complete mess. This is smoke and mirrors. We've seen this for the last past decade and a half. Don't don't fall for this stuff. But nah, you were on the front lines, okay? You sat there and said, "Don't listen to the haters. This game's really fun." And I'm gonna bet you money this dude didn't play the freaking beta. And I said, "Freak, Minxie." I said, "Freak," not the F word, okay? I would not even recommend to buy Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League if you didn't buy it yet. Just wait until these patches come out. Don't get me wrong, the game is fun and I can't. Don't even wait for the patches. Don't even waste your money. If this comes to fucking, it comes to a freaking Game Pass or PlayStation Plus, maybe try it for an hour or two, but that's about it. But I doubt you're really going to enjoy it. Can't wait to see what they do with it in the future. But as of now, mm -hmm. It's not it. And with the haters being upset with it being a live service, I definitely understand that. One thing about me, I'm not going to be fake. If something is in my face, I can't act like it's not there. Live service has been terrible. The best people to do live service at this point for me, I would say Fortnite. And I think the only reason why that is, you know, what it is is because how big the dev team is. It doesn't matter how big the dev team is. What matters is that if they cook the game right and deserve and dish it to us correctly, and if the CEOs can keep their freaking their freaking dirty little hands out of the development cycle of the game, okay? That's the huge problem out of this situation is that this industry is fueled by more by greed than innovation. That's the fuck. That that's that's a freaking problem. I don't know how big Rocksteady is, but from what I see, they don't seem that big because they're not reacting and dealing with all these issues going on with Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. But as of now, y'all, I hey, can't make content. I don't have access to the game. So bear with me as I bear with y'all. Y'all already know what it is. TDN signing out. Yo, yo, yo. Quick announcement. I'm going to be giving away emblems and final shape copies okay. on my stream. Jesus, I hate when this happens. Anyway, now nah, I'm going to remove this one. Anyway, so yeah, it's so, so interesting with these fanboys, I swear. And you know what? I'm glad a game like Helldivers came around and just absolutely slapped the industry upside its head. Huh, <sighs> absolutely refreshing. Now, since we're sparking, uh, speaking of uh, Helldivers... Hello, welcome back to a new video. So recently, I've been playing. God, his new audio Hell is still Divers bad. Too. Hello, welcome back to. God, his freaking audio, man.
Hey, Astro, how you doing, man? So, yeah, if you guys remember this dude, this is the dude that Klutzy covered that did the Steam Deck review, calling it absolutely horrible. Then after Klutzy called him out, he flipped around. <laughs> he flipped it around and said it was the greatest product ever. Then he flipped back, calling it the worst product ever. And I'm just like, buddy, pick a lane. Oh. <sighs> So, chat, let's see what he has to say. The expert review zone. Hello, welcome back to a new video. So recently I've been playing the brand new Helldivers 2. And as a massive fan of the first Helldivers game, I knew I just had to play this game. Unfortunately, so far, it's been kind of... Doubt. Be skeptical. Hard to believe. The story you're currently speaking of seems illegitimate. Given the lack of credible evidence you are presenting, I find it highly difficult to place any trust in the more than likely fabricated alibi you have given me. When one considers all the available evidence and both evidence gathered through the course of- Alright, I gotta stop it right there. Bland, boring, and uninspiring. It's probably one of the most boring games I've ever played. I don't even understand what the point of this game was. It seems like a complete copy and ripoff of Starship Troopers. <laughs> Clancy, why did we ever stop covering this clown? If you're still here. I'm so freaking curious. Why did we stop covering him? Oh, chat, give me a sec. I need to look up Discord real quickly. They did send me some other things real quickly. Give me a hot minute. I'm still here. Don't worry, chat. Like I said, go into Discord. God damn it, Klotzy. Why you give me the fluffy babies? The fluffy babies. Ah, oh, Klutzy. Okay, okay. Let me mute the stream real quickly, guys, just to be sure. So there's no audio. Like, what is it? Uh, copyright claim music? Cause I got, I got, I got to show you guys what Klutzy's been sending me. Okay, okay, here we go, chat. It's a chunky baby. It's a fluffy baby. Oh my god, I want one of those. They're just so damn chunky. Look at them. Look at them. It's so fucking adorable. Look at it. Look at it. All right, back to the video. where you've got this kind of tongue-in-cheek sense of humor that's trying to be really funny, but it's just kind of cringe. Buddy, anything you say is cringe tells me the absolute opposite, that it's an absolute banger, okay? This this game has some the funniest shit you would see happening, especially when the charger hits your ass. Oh, you better be ready for that, that aftershock. Ooh, oh my god. I don't know how many times I've been hit by a charger, then it just sends me flying in. It is absolutely funny. Oh, oh my god. The, the, the way the charger has been put into these games are absolutely hilarious. Especially the some of the puns in here. Time to deploy some liberty. And just it's it's this game's fantastic. It really is, and I'm so glad this type of game. I, I'm glad I lived long enough to play this fantastic game. And you fight against these massive insect bug things that are aliens on other planets. You orbital strike down to the planets and your mission is to wipe out the insects. And no the fuck it is not. No the fuck it's not. There are so many mission 
you know what? I, I screwed it up. I, I failed the challenge. I failed the challenge that freaking mix he gave me. I failed. I only went for 10 minutes. I failed. Oh, it's not so easy when you have a sailor mouth. But again, no. You, people saying that this is just a a Star Trooper ripoff really haven't dug their f- teeth into this game at all. M- let me explain this. This game is more like a 40K universe fucking game, okay? The, especially the way the, the propaganda is, how they're building the world, the enemies. It's mwah, magnifical. At the target zone that you're supposed to go to at the objective area and you get to the objective area and you've got some kind of really boring mediocre objective to complete like activate a satellite dish re-establish the signal stop the signal from being broadcasted destroy some kind of insect's nest and then you've got to go all the way back to the pickup extraction point and then wait two minutes whilst bugs attack you it's kind of like horde mode and then you've got to survive a few minutes until the extraction picks you up and then you head back to the main base where you get some points XP, some money, and then you upgrade your Hey, you know what, Fiery? Hopefully it does, man. I ain't here to shit on your parade, but hopefully it does, man. Character, buy new weapons, that kind of stuff. So it's a pretty bug standard game. Bro? You didn't get it past. No, you got past the first level and you said, that's all this game has to offer to me. I don't have to do this anymore. <laughs> that's all I have to do. Uh-huh. That, that's the whole game right there. I bet you this dude didn't invest as much time as I did. I bet she just booted up the game and that was it. Or, or if he's like Reforge, he stole this footage and just said, well, um, this is all the game that has to offer us. That's it. That's all the game does. But I'm going to go with my first one. And there's nothing really interesting or exciting about the gameplay in this game. One of the most annoying things with this game is before it even lets you get into the meat of the game. It forces you to do this stupid training mode where all it does is tell you how to run, how to jump, how to crouch, how to go prone, how to use a grenade, how to call for reinforcements and supply boxes. And the way... Huh? Listen, you can have your own opinion, but this one, this one makes you fucking look like a lame brain in this situation. It makes you have seem like you're a short stack in this situation. That that tutorial was really freaking cool. I've seen some funny stuff come out of that, especially when you're in that one section where you're just learning how to throw your stratagems like you're using your 5K or 500K bomb, kill bomb or whatever. I've seen some footages where the fucking turmoils Parry the fucking missile and it launches right back at you and just end games you. It's <laughs> it's freaking hilarious. You call for supply boxes and stuff is really weird. You gotta press control How? and then you gotta hold it down and How then input weird? some kind of Tekken style combo where you press the direction <laughs> keys on W. Tekken style combo. Tekken style combo. Oh my god, a Tekken style. More like Dance Dance Revolution. Okay, not Tekken, Dance Dance. Oh, how is this guy a reviewer again? How does this dude have 15k? <laughs> uh, I'm going to be on my way to hitting 10k. Just gotta keep going, just like these maniacs. The up, down, left, right, that kind of stuff. It just seems pointless. Why is it making you do these weird combo moves to get to invest you into the universe to make you feel like a hell diver? Whenever I'm calling in my fucking ordnance, okay? Guess what? I feel like I am a hell diver. Now there are some times where I get pulled out of the of the uh, the the atmosphere because you know a charger knocks my shit in and sends me flying but then i get pulled right back in but i mean it's still good it makes me feel good it makes me feel like a hell diver so guess what mission complete get supplies 
or extractions or sometimes there's some kind of mini game where you've got to fiddle with a terminal and enter some kind of combo input direction or button input and it's just kind of silly and unnecessary the training mode is completely unnecessary as well i'm pretty sure everyone here knows how to throw a grenade change your weapon equip a mission no shit everybody knows how to throw a grenade but you know what the tutorial is for it's for you to go in there and learn the commands how to use the fucking grenades Duh. did you know every other game has different mechanics for throwing grenades for example, when you throw it, it's not going to land accurately like in fucking Apex. Hmm? Or or how about my favorite one? Oh, how about my favorite one? How about in Halo? There's bounce mechanics within there where you can bounce grenades off the wall, except for the sticky grenades. But you can bounce grenades off the wall to get... They, different games have different mechanics. How the fuck are you a reviewer? machine gun call in for supplies why is that something we're forced to have to do to me like 20 minutes to finish the stupid training mode so the gameplay in this game is oh no 20 minutes oh no my fifis oh my butt oh oh 20 minutes i wasted 20 how the fuck did you waste 20 minutes that took me like five to ten minutes to complete what the fuck were you doing no, seriously, seriously, what the fuck were you doing? Also, yeah, we are spec, trust me, we are, but spec, no, 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 let me just say this real quickly too, chat. Spec does a better job than this fucking clown would for his fucking review of Helldivers. Extremely basic. You just have a few weapons. You got your primary weapon, the machine gun. You got your sidearm, the pistol. You got some grenades. You got some special abilities like call for reinforcements, call for supplies, or whatever you've chosen. And the gameplay is basically you just aim at the enemies, the bugs, and you shoot them. The aim. There's a system that you take those metals and you unlocked the fucking weapons, your customization, additional customization, and there's premium stuff that you can get without in the, oh my God. Oh my God, this dude is the worst reviewer. The gaming system feels really weird and floaty. It doesn't really feel snappy and responsive like I would expect from a game that's all about shooting. The gameplay is extremely boring. You've got a melee attack as well. The enemies are just these stupid mindless bugs. You've got the small bugs and then you've got the big bugs that take a few more bullets to shoot down. And they just kind of bum rush you. They don't really have any tactics or AI. There's no strategic strategic thinking, just mow them down until you've run out of ammo and then you reload. For some reason the guns don't automatically reload, you've got to manually press R to reload them and then you've got some grenades and orbital strikes in case you really need them, but you never really need them. So yes, you do need them. For, every, for everything that you get in the game, you're going to need everything. Certain enemies are certain weak to certain things. Your, oh my god, your support weapon literally helps you take down the big, bad, fucking enemies. Like the Bio Titans, like the Hulks. Oh my fucking god. Oh yeah, N Nando, yeah, you can. But then as soon as you start get to, how can I explain this? Once you start to get into the more difficult areas, it's going to be difficult to do that, dude. It's, it's going to be very difficult, especially if you're doing the automatrons, automatons, automatons, Gara. Especially when you're doing the robo bitches. It's going to be difficult. You're going to be, need to be stealthy as fuck if you're going to do it solo. So you land on the planet because you're a hell diver. You land like an orbital shock trooper from Halo. Then you head to the targets, the checkpoint. Say our fucking names right. O D S O D S T. Don't 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 even fucking say it that way next time, buddy. O D S T. Put fucking respect on that name. Points. That's marked on the map. Do the objective and then head back to the landing zone, the extraction zone. So you're just going from point A to B and then from B back to A whilst gunning down a bunch of insects, doing some boring arbitrary side objectives and main objectives, collect a few items, then head back to... Look how badly he is struggling with the signal strength. He's been here...
for almost a minute. When I first did this, this took me about 20 seconds. He's almost been here for a solid mid. I thought DSP was bad. The main ship, the mothership, where you then check your armory to see if you've got any new weapons, fiddle around with your character a bit, maybe change your cloak, your cape, your armor, that kind of stuff if you really care. It's a really boring game. It kind of reminds me a bit of Warframe, where you've got this mothership that is your home base. And you've got these very grindy kind of mesh... How the fuck is Warframe boring? Oh, hell no. No, you see, I don't play Warframe anymore because they fucked me over royally. But I'm going to say this now. It's not a boring game. It is a very good free-to-play game. But you're calling Warframe boring? Oh, boy. You, you know what, chat? Let me grab a bottle of water real quickly. Because I'm going to need it. I, I'm going to need it. I, I'm going to need it. No. Uh-uh. Nah. Nah. uh, -uh. There's, there's no fucking way he just said Warframe is boring. Doggo! Jesse! Come on! There you go. Come on, baby doll. All right. Like you're, you're seriously calling <laughs> Warframe boring? When I've literally seen people create the craziest fucking dojos ever. Let me let me show y'all something real quickly. Warframe makes fucking Destiny look like a joke. Just FYI. Some, there's there's some crazy ass ones they've made. Okay, that's just some of the crazy shit, I guess. Look at this. Here we go. Look at this. You're normally you're not allowed to do this, but. These motherfuckers created this shit. Look at this. There's even a halo fucking autumn, a pillar of autumn in here. How could you say this shit is boring? And not even only that, too, with the dojos and stuff, you, you can make your own Warframe on how powerful or tanky you want to make it. But yeah, let's sit here and say Warframe is fucking boring missions K. and levels are very repetitive and boring you go down there grind xp finish a few objectives come back to the mothership upgrade your character customize your character with new armor or whatever and then just rinse and repeat the gameplay is extremely rep repetitive and monotonous and tedious and i would not recommend buying this game the game is kind of expensive it's like 30 pounds it's not super expensive like 60 pounds so i give them credit for not trying to charge full price but the game just doesn't feel good either. It doesn't look very polished. It looks like a very janky game as well. So, unfortunately... Huh? How is it janky? Yeah, I'm gonna have to give this game 6.2 out of 10. Very unoriginal, just copying Starship Troopers. It would have been... <laughs> 
6.6 out of 2. Buddy, no wonder you're getting ratioed in your fucking comments. Oh my god. A 6.0 out of 2. Better if they just call this game Starship Troopers. It's got kind of like a Ca Captain Brannigan kind of captain character from Futurama who's all about democracy and freedom bringing democracy to the alien bugs and it's trying really hard to be funny but it's not very funny maybe the game would be kind of fun if you had friends hey Santa welcome to the family I appreciate it yeah censored yeah a lot of these people could be to be honest played as a group of friends with voice chat and you're just messing around seeing how many bugs you can take down go back to the headquarters armor up go back down see see unlike suicide squad maybe if i played with my friends i would have a lot more fun maybe but here's the shit kicker though i've played with some randoms multiple times and let me just say this when i was between the levels of 5 and 15 the top commanding officer there. Uh, you won't hear me say that words a lot, especially with the games, you know, if the game's bad. The guy that's hosting the lobby, that's like a level 50 or 55 in that situation, welcomed me into their lobby with like a, a, a big uh, arms wide open hug emote or handshake. And I just sat there like, holy fuck. I'm, I'm brand new to this fucking game. I'm, I'm a shiny. If, if you're a Star Wars fan, you will understand that fucking reference. But yeah, I'm a shiny here. Brand spanking new to the game. And this grizzled vet over here is welcoming me to the game. Just saying like, what's up, fam? Let's go have some fun. Let's go kill some bugs. Let's go clear. Let's go kill some clankers. This community is so fucking hard. Well, just fun to be around. It's it's almost poisonous at this point <laughs> but in a good way in a very good way and again squad up mess around with your friends hey Altando, welcome to the stream man maybe that is the way to enjoy this game i thought this game would be like a multiplayer online game where you launch down to the planet and there's a bunch of people already down there fighting a massive swarm of insects and you've got to like help them out to survive the massive swarm but it just wasn't anything like that. It's just very boring and solitary experience. Okay. Okay. It was boring. It was boring. So that same person that I was talking to you guys about that max 50 before the update came out to where they bumped it to 150. We got into a situation with the automatrons on Melvin Creek. If I'm saying the pronouncing the name right, I'm just going to call it the Creek. We got into a hairy situation. To the point where they were surrounding the whole squad. Do you know what the fucking commander said? I, 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 Chad, what do you think he said when we started to get surrounded? And we needed to go get an extraction. What do you think this guy did? Wolfie probably has no fucking idea. He probably played the first mission and then called it quits. What do you think the commanding officer in that situation did when we were getting surrounded? Exactly. The chat's getting close. Chat's getting close to what he did. No, Oryx. See, see Oryx, you're, you're kind of close, but... Okay, I'm just going to spoil it now. What this man did is that he told everybody else, get to the evac, sit, get into, get to the evac, okay? And we were kind of disagreeing with him. Like, how the fuck are you going to, like, fight all these, all this by yourself? I see the man bring out his wrist with his, like, uh, I forgot what it's called, but his, uh, whatever you use the, the, the pad to bring it in. He's hitting the fucking pad, right? He's hitting it. Next minute, he throws it down 
I'm just kind of staring and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Next minute, here comes from the fucking sky, this giant fucking mech that lands down hitting the ground. And I'm just staring like, oh, oh, he's doing a last stand. Oh, we need to go. This man held them back by himself with a mech. Okay, keep this in mind. By him fucking self. And we managed to extract. Okay, and before he died too, he set up a 500 kilogram bomb. And uh, it's not a real bomb, YouTube. It's not. It's not in game. Okay, it's not real. He sets it off before he dies too. For democracy. I love this game and its fucking community. I guess that's it. That was one of your worst fucking reviews I've ever seen. And I thought the, uh, oh boy, I really thought the uh, Hogwarts one was bad. All right. All right, chat. Let's see what David so Jaffe's got to say. So, supposedly, David Jaffe's got a bit of a skill issue going on. This one's going to be interesting. So, let's see what David Jaffe's got to say, chat. So, I sat down tonight to play some games, and I had this really strange response that I think has been building, but it built enough tonight that I finally recognized it for, I think, what it was, which is I was going to go into Unicorn Overlord uh, or maybe back to Elden Ring. Um, I was looking at some other games I'm playing. I was playing uh, Dragon's Dogma, possibly, or Banishers, or if you go over to uh, Xbox uh, Game Pass, I was thinking about playing... Um, uh, where did it go? Uh, something I was playing in here. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention something, too. If you're a member and you did sign up to, you know, become a member, of course, you've got emotes. So if you got my little avatar next to your name, you've got emotes to use. So just FYI. And I just, I had this feeling of just like, oh, it's going to come to this point where it's going to get really hard. Um and then I'm going to be stuck and then I'm going to have to spend a day or two or three days figuring it out and uh, putting in that work to really get over that hump and maybe boo fucking who you have to put time into the, any aspect of your life. You're going to have to put fucking time into it to, in order to get over that hump. And once you do, it feels so fucking good. Just like when I beat my first Dark Souls boss. When I tell you once I learned its patterns, learned its weak spots, I picked out the best weapon to fight it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It felt so good. There's only one hump. Oh, I'm also uh, over on Steam. I was uh, playing the excellent uh, Pepper Grinder. Uh, you know, I was thinking about that, you know, playing that. Um, but I was just like, you know, I'm going to get to a point where it just kind of falls apart again. And it's just like, oh, man, you know, what am I, it's, you know, am I going to abandon the game? Am I going to, you know, muddle through it because I just want to say I finished it because I wanted the experience of finishing it, even though I didn't enjoy it. And so I'm, I think my point is I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to abandon a lot of games and I'm maybe starting to get to the point where I'm comfortable with it because that's bad. That's really fucking bad. Maybe you buying up all these games and not completing them is a really bad financial decision, David. Did you ever think of that, Mr. Jaffe, Mr. God of War developer? 
Did you ever thought about that? And that's the sad part too. He's one of the fucking OGs on the fucking that developed God of War too. And now he's sitting here bitching and crying about my fifis, my game. It's too hard. I think it's easy to kind of look at that like a, I guess I was just going to say failing, like a failing, like, oh, you should stick with it and this, that, and the other. But it's like, you know, um, I heard American McGee say something a long time ago and someone recently say failing, like a failing, like, oh, you should stick with it and this, that, and the other. But it's like, you know, um, I heard. You're not going to fucking win every single time, David. Is that, is that what you want in life? To constantly win every single time and have no challenge in your life? Is that what you want, David? I sure as fuck don't. I want a fucking challenge in my life. Maybe not to be challenged by every single day, but I do want a challenge to, to where I can overcome it and feel like, yeah, yeah, I overcame that. Yeah, I have that as a fucking, uh, uh, as a badge of honor on my fucking name. Okay. Like, you, you think it's so fucking easy to make videos every single fucking day, try to come up with new topics? No. I mean, sure, it's not as hard as a construction worker's job, a nurse, uh, the medical field job, you know, packing groceries. But it's there's a little difficulty there. But if you know where to look and you put enough time into what you're trying to do, you're going to overcome it. You're you just put the time into it and if you love the thing so much put your time into it but don't sit there and bitch and whine that you're oh, i gotta put time into this oh i can't believe i can't stand people like that i really can't american mcgee say something a long time ago and someone recently said it and got pressed for it but i'm like american said that it's the first time i heard somebody say it which is he says you know you don't sit down and read a book and halfway through the book, it gets harder to read, like the language changes and you're like, oh, this is a much more difficult thing to read than it was. But there's something about difficulty ramping in games that, um, and again, like I said, I don't know if it's age uh, or if it's just I've played enough games. No, it's called skill issue. That's what it's called. Now that I'm tired of that feeling, but there's something about difficulty ramping in games where it's just like. I'm almost like, I don't want to start. I don't want to start this thing that's going to be a 20-hour experience. And at hour 11, I'm going to hit some wall. And it's going to be, okay, I got to get good. You know, I don't want to get good. I mean. I don't want to get good. No. No, Daddy. I don't want to get good. I just want to be a basic bitch. Really, David? Really? You, you you just want a free pass in life. That's what you're essentially saying. Like, I understand that you don't want to keep investing into these, you know, games that are supposedly difficult. Like, really, David? Come on, bro. Come on. Even, even r fucking Rich from Review Tech USA, right? The dude was always complaining about Dark Souls being like, this weird genre of difficulty and stuff, but no, this motherfucker picks up Elden Ring one day and has an absolute blast with it, even though he's getting his ass beat into the ground. For like, for the love of God, dude. Also, too, there's no shame in sucking. Okay, we all start somewhere. We all start from ground zero somewhere. And if you want to invest your time into something, invest your time. Go look up tutorials on YouTube. Crack a fucking book open. Do 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 something. Instead of just bitching on the internet saying, I don't want to get good. Uh. I, mean, I, I don't mind getting good if that's an enjoyable experience, but... I'm just wondering, am I the only one experiencing this? Like, lately, you know, I'll play a lot of Marvel Snap, and I'm not great at it. Oh, my fucking God. Marvel Snap? Really, David? <laughs> oh, has nobody fucking done the video on this? <laughs> Marvel Snap.
bro yes oh oh yeah especially what was it a uh i can't remember orcs i you brought up a good topic people are beating freaking dark souls or elden ring these days with like a fucking hamster blind i don't know not a blindfold but their feet it's just <laughs> come on i don't mind losing um but I'm genuinely engaged. I've been playing Botany Manor, which just came out. It's very, I think, short. Um, you don't really get all that stuck in it. Um, it's a fucking demo, Jeff. Or Dab, Jeff. David, it's a fucking demo. Of course it's going to be short. I just, oh, I've been playing the shit out of this game. Slice and dice, this thing's excellent. But these are all kind of like, you know, it, it, it's not like narrative base where you, you know, you're just trying to, it, this is almost more like Slay the Spire or something, right? Um, I don't know. I just wanted to bring it up because I'm like, you know, I'm feeling that more and more. And this was the first time where I had some time to sit in game and I was like, okay, I'm going to play Unicorn or Banished or whatever. Banishers. And I'm just like, you know, I just, I don't want to. Not that I don't want to play the game, not that I don't want to have the experience of playing it, but I'm like, I just know what's coming around the bend. Unicorn Overlord is probably a 30-hour, 40-hour game, and I'm probably about 14 hours in, and it's going to come to a point where I'm just like, oh, it's really hard. Now just give up, it, give up on it or, or commit. I'm like, I don't want to commit. Okay. Uh, let me tell you guys something. It's okay to quit halfway through the game. But if you're going to sit here like David Jeff, I don't want to do it. I don't want to. I don't want to. You're just fucking annoying. Just either keep going with it, keep rolling with the punches, or or just quit. Do you, do you really think Gar, I sat there with Dark Souls bitching and complaining constantly? Oh, this game's so fucking hard. No, you know what I did? I got pissed the fuck off and slammed my controller a couple times. Then, well, Mama Rage came into the room and beat my ass. And then I thought to myself, ooh, ooh, wait a minute, I have YouTube. I could look up tutorials on how to beat this boss. Ooh, ooh, I could learn their attack patterns and beat them. And then after my fifth death, holy shit, I got good. Huh. Foreign concept. Uh, maybe I'm just burnt out. Maybe I'm just tired. I don't know. But I don't have this with movies or books or tv series that i like um and this is not somebody like oh games should be shorter i mean i think a lot of them should but that's irrelevant um and i don't even know if it means depending on the game yes i'll agree with that depending on the game yeah it should be shorter like suicide squad it had no fucking reason for being as long as it was no fucking reason games should be you know what i do that's what i do think i think games should adapt the difficulty to always keep you in that zen zone you should never unless it's just a very specific vision of the creators you should never experience the game getting hard it why not why, why the fuck not if that's the vision that the creators want for the game fine whatever that's their vision then and now it's your turn to take all that information that you gained from the development and what they wanted for the game to make that decision if you want to invest your time and money into it because at that point you're wasting that fucking time and you're wasting your money and you're just screeching on the internet i've got skill issues ah. should just always be engaging um but the minute it gets hard the minute you have to decide, are you willing to put the work in? And I don't want to put the work in when I want to, you know, wrap the day up and just chill and play a video game. I just want to. Then go play your fucking Pokemon games. Then go play your other little fucking easy mode games then, David. Holy freaking skill issues, Batman. Relax. Um, but again, maybe it's an age thing. Let me know in the comments or hit me up on Twitter, wherever you find me. I'm just, I, it's not a, it's not an old age issue. It's not, no, no. Again, Jaffe, it's a skill issue. That's what it is, buddy. God.
All right. Yo. So, all right, chat. So, uh, besides David Jaffe being David Jaffe, I got another one for you. This one is pretty old, but it randomly just appeared into my freaking recommendations. And I'm like, okay. Okay. I watched about a minute. And I'm like, okay. Okay. We'll do a video. Well, not a video. We'll do it on the live stream. We'll do it live. No, I'm not too familiar with this dude, but, um, yeah, yeah, I, I can already smell it on him. All right, Chad, let's dive into the video. So today we're going to be talking about why is everybody bitching about $70 games? Because it's overpriced fucking garbage. That's why, buddy. It's dumb. Let's get ba 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 brutal. Uh, oh, 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 I'm gonna return to embryo. Oh, that was fucking cringe. Help me, help me, Chad. That was fucking bad. I'm actually cringing. Holy fuck. That was bad. That was bad. That was bad. I gotta get up. I get up again. Oh, that was fucking bad. I thought my intro to the Hell Divers was fucking cringy, but this, this one, oh my god. Mm. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, the Fortitron. And today, we're going to be talking about the controversial topic of why games are $70 and games are raising in price and how they're pricing people out. And blah, 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 blah. I got a few things to say about this. Let's get into it. <laughs> Why would you put your intro twice? Do a simple swipe transaction, not just me, 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 me. Fucking stupid. All right, so this all started when Sony announced that PS5 games would be $10 more than their PS4 equivalents. And this drove everyone crazy. Everyone flipped their shit over this. Aren't you people tired of being screwed over? <laughs> so games are down. Yeah. Cause let's be honest, let's 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 talk about it. Let's talk about it. Ever since Sony decided to do the seventy dollar price tag, and this is including Microsoft too and fucking Nintendo, the games haven't been hitting exactly hard, haven't they? It seems like they've gotten more buggier, worse writing in the story. Yeah, the the, the, the seventy dollar price tag is fucking uh, justified, dude. $70 where prior they were $60 so a $10 difference and I don't get why people are upset about this inflation's been a thing for a hey thank you very much for subscribing to the channel Emerald I really appreciate it man a really long time and I feel I don't get why people are upset about this inflation's been a thing for a really long time <laughs> <laughs> Inflation's been for a thing for a long time. Buddy, the $60 price tag has been the same since like when I was a fucking kid, okay? It's only recently changed. It's because it's not due to inflation. It's due to the fact that these fucking gaming uh industry this uh <laughs> the CEOs don't know how to balance their checking books in this situation. My god, the fucking price tag for what was it? Spider-Man 2 was like $250, $250 million? Like really? You you needed that much for for a Spider-Man game? And it still looks like shit? Huh. And I feel like games have been in like the $70, $80, sometimes $90 mark but for years. Yeah, 
Yeah, look at that. That's been for fucking years, dude. But guess what? Those games right there, it's been horrible. Because if I remember that game real quickly, that one did not do so popular. If I remember correctly, that was like a long ass time ago. But I'm going to say it now. It did not justify the $70, well, <laughs> price tag. It really didn't. There's Miss Pac-Man right there, $40, perfectly fine. Madden? No. Fuck no. Street Fighter Alpha 2? Nah, I don't think it's priced appropriately. Not in my opinion. Donkey Kong? Little too rich for my blood? Yeah, you know what, censored? Yeah, you got a point there. Yeah, a lot more people would be a lot more lenient to spend 30 or $40 on the product versus 60 or 70 fucking dollars. Like at that point, I might as well just say, <laughs> go screw yourself. I'm going to rent your game on Gamefly. Uh-oh, guard just gave a secret away how he gets his fucking, well, games to play. Hmm. Yeah, oh, oh, uh, John Bond. John, yes, you bring up a very good topic on that. Not to mention that when you bring up those price tags, you're also outing a lot of people that can buy video games. Secondly, outside of the U.S., there's a lot of people that get just absolutely get the Glock Glock 9000 in their mouth through this whole situation. Like some people outside of the U.S. have to spend $130 just to play certain video games. Hell, there's even, I'm not even going to mention it, but it's one of my friends. He's not New Zealand, but a different one. He has to spend $250 just to play one of these games. $250 fucking dollars. Don't y'all love that? Just to enjoy a hobby. No wonder pirating is a problem. Hmm. Even when I was a kid and I was buying Super Nintendo games. Okay, I wasn't buying them, my parents were buying them, but I feel like they're the same. Oh, shocker. Same price. So yeah, I'm old. How do you do, fellow kids? I really don't get why people think that games being priced at $70 prices people out. That's just not true. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> Oh, buddy, what brain damage has happened to you? <laughs> it's simply not true. Holy brain damage, Batman. God really threw me a bone today. <laughs> I just got done explaining why it does. Spending $250 on one game while I would rather go spend it on groceries, fill up my tank, spend it on clothes, anything else besides a video game that's overpriced. Welcome to the family, son. Welcome to the family, b -sums. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're right about that one, man. Censor, you're definitely right about that one. Especially where it's gotten a lot cheaper to produce on disc. And now they want to move to digital, but they're going to keep the same prices now? Nah, sorry. These gaming companies need to do a lot better job. And the only way we're going to do it is to stop buying their products. If you want to have a game on launch day, right when it comes out, yeah, you're going to pay full price for it. That's the way. That's just how it is. This is the way. If you can't afford to buy that game, don't buy it. Wait till it goes on sale. A ton of people in my PS5 disc versus digital edition always comment how they're buying games used or they're buying them on sale on Amazon or they're buying them off of eBay. They're pretty much buying them every other way other than right off the rip, brand new launch day or through the digital store. So I don't get it. Like a lot of you are not buying these games day one. Yeah, because people are curious and they want to buy it secondhand. So they're not supporting these people. They're not supporting the companies because honest with you guys, that's how you get by things like secondhand. 
like the the way I just told you guys right now, you can use GameFly to buy like PS5. Well, not buy, but rent games like PS5 games, Xbox games, Nintendo Switch games, or even movies too. It's not an advertisement, YouTube. Fuck off. It's just my experience. But yeah, yeah, that's that's Gar's secret right there. How do you think he got Spider Man too? How do you think he got God of War? Did, because I use GameFly because I refuse to pay 70 fucking dollars. Which is a shame. Being a former musician, I really feel on this topic because a lot of musicians, it's make or break for them with their record company if their album doesn't make a huge amount of sales in its first week. It's the same with movies on launch weekend or when the movie first releases. It's the same with games. Yeah, this is where you fucked up, buddy. You you do realize m most of the movie they don't rely on movies to make them their money back, right? They rely on like uh, toys, the other side media. When they bring it to DVD, they kind of rely on those more than the movies. Hey, listen! If my quick math in my head, Dragon, I believe that would be the twelve million. The one, the $40 game. More people need to be buying games day one. But I understand a lot of you can't afford that. Hell, I can't afford to be buying games like every week. I only buy the games that I want to play. Oh, boo-hoo. I can't afford games every single week to purchase. Oh, scale issue? Scale issue, buddy? Oh. There are a lot of games on PS5 that have come out that look great. Ratchet and Clank. Uh, Sackboy, uh, Bug Snacks. I don't know, there's a bunch that look amazing. Spider-Man Miles Morales. Again, those games look incredible, but they're not my type of game. And Merchandise, that's what them. I was thinking earlier. I don't buy Thank them on you, launch day. Sir. I don't even buy them on sale because they're just not my type of game. I don't know where the pressure is coming from for a lot of people to be buying games day one, regardless if they know they like them or not. I feel like by now, if you have been playing games for more than a couple of years, you know what kind of games you like. So you should know. Yeah, but what if a new game comes out? What if a newer newer genre comes out and you're like, oh, fuck, this game looks interesting, man. Man, I want to, like, go and try it out. Maybe, maybe like, oh, wait a minute, that's a, that's a steep price. Asking $70? Man, I'm not sure if I want to spend this money which games you're looking forward to and which ones you want to invest in on buying day one when they come out if you're brand new to gaming yeah it's a little bit more tricky but i would kind of buy some older games that are on sale or try out a service like ps now or xbox game pass and then play some free games and then tr find which ones you like and then build off of there I that i agree on that i agree with him that's that's actually a good point he actually does bring up that is actually good. You know, if you're not in, like, if you're brand new to gaming and stuff and you're not sure what you like, sign up for Game Pass or, God for his sake, PlayStation Plus. That shit's overpriced. And just try some games out. See what you like. See what you want to move and groove with. Or, better yet, there's some free games on the market that you can play too and try those out. Like, like what was it? I forgot that one fucking game makes you love so damn much. It's the it's a better it's a less it's the lesser game to than Diablo. God, I can't remember. Path of Exile. That's the name. That's it. There's so many other ways you could do it too, buddy. I don't get why people are frustrated by this. Give me because the fucking quality does not reflect the asking price that they are asking us for the seventy dollars. Companies have grown so much, even in the last ten years. Games are huge epics now. They are the equivalent to Marvel movies that cost $200 million to make. And really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, e even though fucking... <laughs> okay, yeah, oh yeah, Cyberpunk's development cost $313 million. It's not like they were developing for four fucking consoles and, and a PC. Right? Right? And even though that game fucking released to the public, it was still dog shit. You know what? Yeah, no, it was four consoles. Technically, the Xbox One and the PS4 and the fucking... <laughs> 
they made their money back, bro. And people can make their money back if they make good fucking games. That's why a lot of that's the going around in circles with the people with this dude and games like equal that or more like they're insane the prices must rise if we're expecting the kind of quality that we've been getting especially recently cap that's a fucking cap that you saying that's quality i know you're not an old time gamer since you fucking said that buddy <laughs> pretty graphics oh oh the graphics are pretty oh yeah, the cost of gaming has to go up. But no it doesn't. No it doesn't. You know what they need to do? They need to balance their fucking books. That's what they need to do. And spoiler alert, they need to stop investing into these live services because it's not being profitable. Maybe 5 games I can name off the top of my head right now. Fortnite, uh what was the other ones? Hell what is it? Hell Divers? Uh, Path of Exile, Warframe, and God, I just had the other one on top of my head, guys. I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting it. Counter-Strike are the only fucking profitable games that they can run with right now. And that's the top of games I could think of top of my head right now. Those are the only profitable live services that are actually keeping these companies alive. I'm not throwing Apex Legends in there because... Like you, you fucking over greedy like that, like 500, you're going to pay 500. You're going to make us pay $500 for a death box. <laughs> you got to love it. But again, you are not obligated to pay full price for games. If you don't want to, if you don't have the means to, if you don't have the means to, then yeah, continue buying games used or buy them off eBay or buy them when they go on sale. What I will say is if there's a franchise that you follow, especially if it's from a smaller developer, save up some money and buy their game on launch day. It means a lot. It really pushes that developer in. Oh no, uh, B, uh, B Psalms. The reason why I was saying that is I was just saying, making the argument, the only profitable live services in my opinion are those five games. That's it. Into the next phase or becoming like a double a title to a triple a title in their next title my favorite example and if you've probably heard me say it 100 million times is from software and yet they haven't cranked up their prices on their games now have they so what's the rest of the excuses for this rest of the fucking industry great looking fucking game praise plays really great not too many bugs so what's the problem here it's how they price their their how they it's how they budget their games. That's the problem. But fucking but, uh, fucking corporate but but but, but look. Come on, Gara. Bootlicker over here can't simply figure that out. And there's one problem I want to go over again with him. My favorite example, and if you've probably like a double A title to a triple A title in their next title, is that developer into the next phase or becoming like uh it means a lot it really pushes that developer into the next phase or become it 100 million times is from software if from software never got the chances they got with dark souls they would not have ever released bloodborne or any of the rest of the dark souls games or sekiro or now elden ring it took them building their fan base or people finding out about them for them to get to where they are today. No shit. No fucking shit. It's more like they gave us really good games. Constantly good games. Maybe people can make the argument that Dark Souls 2 wasn't really good. Or Dark Souls 3 wasn't really good. But they worked with it. They they, they worked on it. And they built up the good will and reputation. And look where they're right now. They're an absolute juggernaut that makes the AAA fucking game industry look like a goddamn joke. But the seventy dollars is pro fucking justified, uh huh? If the word of mouth then spread on Demon Souls back on two thousand nine, From Software probably would have fizzled out, or maybe continue to make those Armored Core games from way back in the day. Okay, and that's how it goes. Big fucking deal. And just been another irrelevant game developer in the times now. I challenge you. Don't just buy every game out there. Find. 
Yeah, Emerald, you got a point there. They did start with Demon Souls. You got a point there. I keep forgetting about Demon Souls. A developer or a franchise that you believe in and buy their next game on launch day. It means a lot. It's going to help the developer in a big way. And that's how they get to the next level and make AAA titles. No, it's not. No, it's not. Continuously buying the same slop over and over again isn't going to help the problem. It's only going to worsen the problem. Look at Pokemon. That series has just gotten worse over the years. From Sword and Shield to fucking Scarlet and Violet. Pokemon Legends Arceus is absolutely a fucking outline on that one. But from Sword and Shield to Scarlet and Violet has gotten worse. More fucking bugs. The story mode is absolutely terrible. Pokemon designs are starting to wane. The, the the ideas that they have are starting to even get even worse now. Like, seriously? We're going to put a chandelier on top of our Pokemon now? Really? Anyway, I just wanted to rant about this topic. Something that I feel passionately about. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. What your opinions are. Am I wrong? Let me know. I'm going to head out of here. Just do me one. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, no. People were. <laughs> oh, oh, this one deserves a like. The mental gymnastics this man pulls to justify a $10 per game price increase, yet makes an entire video criticizing a hypothetical future price increase on Game Pass. Yeah. Yep. 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 All right, chat. Do we want to go for. Uh, for this dude right here, Chopper, or do we want to do another Harmon Smith video, or we could either A, watch a uh, <laughs> a Reforge clip, or his uh, video right here. What, what sounds good to you guys? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me, tell me. I wish I could, Jacob, but I don't know how to do it, to be honest. If there is a mod that knows how to do it, go ahead and do it. All right, it's Reforge. Chat saying it's Reforge. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so everybody knows how. Uh, the fuck was it? You remember when? Uh, what was his name? Um, uh, I'm trying to remember his name. OJ. OJ passed away this week, right? You know, it was a little sad, but there's some fucked up shit he's done. Mm -hmm. Try to keep that out of the comment section. So Reforge decided to make a little comment about it. You know, that I just found out like, like that's fucking hypocritical as fuck. And remember this video chat? Anybody remember this video? R remember how he was calling us, uh, you know, saying us salt and content creators were, uh, killers and stuff because we were uh you know reacting to people saying that their comments are absolutely dumb and that type of thing right right you know sometimes we would make jokes and call them jimmy neutron or mbg you, you, you know you guys know this you guys should know this you know you guys watch my videos watch me ramble 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 Thank you, Antendo, for that. I appreciate that. But yeah, you are not obligated to spend any money on anything that you don't want to. Fuck that. Hey, listen. So, I want everybody to just pay attention to the class. And also, shout out to Astro. That man watches this fucking Reforge's streams all the times. And I cannot stand this dude. 
But um, I want you guys to listen to this very, very closely. He would condemn the absolute shit out of us for doing shit like this. But it's okay for him to do this. <laughs> uh, OJ cared about 60 FPS. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was a staunch... He was a staunch defender of 60 FPS, you know? That's really the reason he committed the murder. They were having a debate about 30 and 60, and he just, he had had enough, you know? He had had enough. Let's play that again. Let's play that again. Just make sure you guys heard it. (laughs) Uh, OJ cared about 60 FPS. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, he was a staunch, he was a staunch defender of 60 FPS, you know? That's really the reason he committed the murder. They were having a debate about 30 and 60, and he just, he had had enough, you know? He had had enough. And we're the bad guys. We're, 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 we're the ones that made the terrible decision where we just uh, disagree with somebody. But you want to make a joke like that? Not even like a fresh day after the guys passed away? Go fuck yourself, Reforge. You haven't changed at all. Mm. This one was an interesting one, right? So this one is about hell divers too. And uh, basically ponies are now advocating for the ability to buy medals to progress the battle pass. And for once it's not. And this one is actually, I'm surprised Reforge actually said no. So let's listen to this. This is actually one time I'll actually agree with Reforge. Medals. I'm here. I want to log in and pay $10 and get like a thousand medals. I'm here to tell you that is a terrible idea. That is. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. The one time I agree with this man. Holy fuck, chat. Yeah, me sans, I'll agree with that. Yeah, I will agree with that wholeheartedly. Because I would rather have a fun experience versus a fucking sloppy ass fucking $70 game. It's absolutely awful. No, you simply don't want to do that to this game. One of the reasons that this game has the engagement that it does is because it's an addictive content loop and you're constantly getting something to spend like you're it. There's a it's a it's a perfect feedback loop. The gameplay is really fun and the stuff that you get from playing, you can then go buy. You can go get stuff from the from the war bond. Like it, it, Hold on, hold on. We'll, we'll pause that. We'll, we'll pause that real quick, guys. Oh yeah, no Nintendo. I agree with you. Yeah, no, no, you're you're not going to fucking sit there, prayed at me, fucking lie to me in my face saying that I need to pay $70 when you fucking sit there and absolutely ruin one of my favorite franchises, Pokemon, mind you, and say, oh, yeah, that's a great experience. Yeah, you, you don't got a problem there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. If you're not playing at all... Like, why do you care about getting stuff then? How come am I missing something? That's quite literally everything that people fight against in video games is paying for gear. You know what I'm saying? That would be like going into a game like Destiny and being like, well, just let me spend money so that I can get raid gear. I mean, that's what that's tantamount to. It's like the main aspect of grind in this game is grinding for metals so that you can then spend them on the war bond. And you're like, yeah, I don't want to do that. Just let me buy them. Hey, 
<laughs> yeah, I agree. I, I, I sadly I have to agree. What's the fucking point of spending all your fucking money on that without just <laughs> all you're doing is robbing yourself the joy of putting in effort in the game. That's all you're doing. Oh, oh, let me spend 10 bucks to get this raid armor that I don't have to go into the raid and uh, bother with it. I'll bet you guys fucking anything. If that standard wasn't already there, Bungie would have abused it. They would have just slapped it around and straight up abused it. You don't remove the free medals from completion? I'm not sure what you mean. You can still earn them for free? No, no. Everything. Th- that, that is completely antithetical to what games like this are about. Games like this are not about you being able to come in and be Johnny Credit Card, swipe it, and be, oh, I got everything. I don't need to play now. I understand where you're coming from of like, you have less time and you, you have more, you have more money than time, right? Let's just say that's the case. You've got so much money that you're like, I don't, I don't want to grind the game for 10 hours a day. I understand the, the place that you're coming from, but I don't agree with your conclusion So, like, I can understand your place in life where you're like, look, man, I can only play a couple hours a night. I've got tons of disposable income. Just let me buy these medals so I can try out the new guns and the new armor. Exactly. That's I understand that, too. But you're robbing yourself of the time that you could invest and be around people instead of like, oh, I want to put all this money in and just uh, rob myself of the joy. Like, can you guys fucking imagine for this for a second? Imagine playing Halo, right? And then a, a thing pops up on your screen. It says, hey, we'll give you invincibility and unlimited ammo with rocket with a rocket launcher if you pay ten dollars. And then you just straight up go around just owning everybody. How fun would that be, fa- chat? How you would just straight up rob yourself. And yeah, he's still talking about destiny. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, OK, let's just be honest here. OK. Destiny is addicting they've designed destiny to be addicting totally get where you're coming from your conclusion is wrong and i believe it would be terrible for the game the, 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 a game like this rises and falls on player incentivization and, and players feeling like their time is adequately rewarded and when you let somebody swipe a credit card it cheapens the whole thing I can't believe I'm agreeing with Reforge that one fucking time but that one time he actually gets a W well mmm 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 Mm. You know what? We'll we'll just skip to something else for re re for, re re for a little bit. Why do you think they expect different, Capono? Kellen, console gamers have been playing at thirty this frames for the last ten years plus. Now people expect different. Why do you think they expect different, Capono? Why? Oh, also, they've been playing games at thirty frames per second for the last ten years plus. You know what's remarkable? Not me. Not me. I stopped playing thirty <laughs> FPS games four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you sure about that report? You sure about that, Riri? You sure about that? I stopped playing. <laughs> I stopped playing games that were in 30 FB. <laughs> you sure, Riri? You sure about that, buddy? Oh, no, 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 no. You sure about that, Riri? <laughs> Need to go. I used to stop playing games with the <laughs> many, many years ago. I stopped playing games that were thirty frames.
<laughs> right. Right, Riri. Isn't that interesting? How new technology came out, expectations were set, a value proposition was made, I purchased a device, and I no longer play 30 FPS games. Isn't that- Reforge, you gotta be careful with your fucking words, buddy, because they come to bite you back in the ass. Hard. Isn't that remarkable how that works? It's kind of interesting that, like, tech advances. Like, go back in time and look at the version of Quake 3 that I played. Are PC Master Race guys playing games that look like that? No. You would never say that in any other situation. Imagine somebody upgrading their PC and tell them that. Well, I mean, you upgraded your PC and you didn't get any... You're still playing games at 1080, 30. You're still playing games at 1080, 30. So what, what? That's their own preference if they want to. And usually when people want to upgrade their PC anyway is because they want newer parts to make it more bulkier and more accessible for them to enjoy. You know, I, I used to fucking hate... Hey, playing Pokemon and how slow it was. Holy fuck. Thank God PCs came around and had that fast, like the speed up feature on it. Oh my God. It makes it so much easier to play Pokemon. You know, why is that a problem? You've been playing games at 1080 30 for a really long time. You know what they would say? They'd be like, I bought better hardware. Like I did this so that I could get better performance. What do you mean? What? Why would I not expect better? Like imagine saying that to somebody who did that in, in the PC realm. You're expecting it better. Like, what do you mean? The 1080 30. You're still playing games at 1080 30. So, wh- wh- you know, why is that a problem? You've been playing games at 1080 30 for a really long time. You know what they would say? They'd be like, I bought better hardware. Like, I did this so that I could get better performance. What do you mean? What? Why would I not expect better? Like, imagine saying that to somebody who did that in, in the PC realm. You're expecting a $2,000 experience from a $500 box? No, you're moving the goalpost and creating. Oh my god, Riri. Really? Let's listen to that one more time. I did this so that I could get better performance. What do you mean? What? Why would I not expect better? Like, imagine saying that to somebody who did that in, in the PC realm. You're expecting a $2,000 experience from a $500 box? No, you're moving the goalpost and creating a standard that nobody nobody claimed. Nobody claimed that. You're making that up. That's a straw man. Nobody has once said, I expect $2,000 PC experience out of my console. Nobody said that once. No, but the motherfuckers love to say, oh, oh, we, we, we could do uh, 4K 60 frames right on the fucking box, mind you, too. We could do 4K 60 frames. No problem at all. No problem at all. But yeah, here you are. Fuck <laughs> Oh, fuck me. Fuck me, chat. Like, you're doing that classic goalpost shift of, well, I'm going to blame the consumer. You shouldn't have expected that. What are you talking about? I was told I'd get 4K games. I was told I'd get ray tracing. I was told I'd get no more loading screens. I was told I'd get 60 FPS. And you know what is just absolutely remarkable? One device I bought gives me those things. (laughs) <sighs> Yet there's still loading screens on plenty of the fucking games. Yet the power of the PlayStation SSD <laughs> makes the loading screen now existing. Even though fucking uh, Suicide Squad has plenty of loading screens. <laughs> I'm moving on to the next topic. No. 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 <sighs> Oh, God, I probably got that out of order, but Chad's basically got the whole fucking thing. God. Yeah, that's him insulting, blah, blah, blah. Ooh, ooh, if anybody's been... No, 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 no. That's too easy. I don't like it when it's too easy. Ooh, wait, 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 wait. What's this one about? I keep Those of us that play regularly are starved for... Oh, I hate Twitter's new shit. It's so fucking annoying. Ooh, ooh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Let's do this one. Xbox sucks. 
it would have been fine if Microsoft and their uh, hardcore supporters weren't constantly chirping about. <laughs> yeah, that gel really seeped into there. I've got that nice, nice little brain rod going. <laughs> About the Series X being 4K 120 that eats monsters for breakfast. It would have been fine if Microsoft and their uh, hardcore supporters weren't constantly chirping about the Series X being 4K 120 that eats monsters for breakfast. Well, I mean, in 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 my personal opinion. Just as a consumer, if, if I wasn't even a YouTuber, but I was on Twitter and I watched YouTube videos and, you know, I tracked the coverage of this. I was a main stage host at E3 2019. I was sitting facing the stage and I watched the Project Scarlet marketing and I thought, this is going to be phenomenal, okay? So as a consumer, I would quite literally look at Xbox as a joke. I'm like, you're a joke. You lied to the public. You set a video to private on your own channel. They lie all the damn time. They lie all the damn time. And thank you earlier too, Hero. I appreciate that. But they lie all the fucking time. Boo, this box could do 4K. 60 frames. It could do ray tracing. Oh, 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 or this box over here could do 4K 120 frames per second. Reforge. It's not just Xbox. PlayStation does it too. Nintendo does it too. Aaron Greenberg deleted his tweet about 60 FPS standard. Oh shit, really, Nintendo? Fuck. That, mo- that one must have been a doozy output up to 120 they don't respect you as a consumer they don't duh duh welcome to the fucking realization reforge duh they only see you as a number that's what we've been squawking about this whole damn time they tell you whatever they need to tell you and then they just delete it if it doesn't if it if it doesn't turn out to be true how many, how many companies are doing that? Has Nintendo ever done this? Yes. Has PlayStation ever done this? Are they? Yes. Yes. Yes, they fucking have, Reforge. All the big three have. Are they out here deleting tweets? Are they out here setting videos to private? They're a joke. Like, there's no niceties anymore. There's no nice way to talk about it. They're a joke. They're all clowns. And you're their nice little fucking puppet. Well, you're PlayStation's nice little puppeteer. Or puppet. They, they didn't even attempt to make good on the promises of the marketing. And it's hard to even believe. Yeah, just like the power of the SSD with fucking Ratchet and Clank. They said it only can run on the PlayStation 5 with its power SSD. Then we find out months fucking later when it comes to PC. You don't need an SSD to run the fucking game with to have that flawless seam you don't need the SSD so there's live number one from PlayStation that the marketing was was accidentally inaccurate unless they literally made all of the marketing about Series X and S just purely on projections it, you you literally watch it and you're like this doesn't make any sense you guys couldn't have believed that this was going to happen you're not, it's not even like they're close to it and fell short. They're not even close. They're not even in the hemisphere of what they promised. Yeah, but you know what? It's not just the hardware by itself. It could be also the game engine itself. You know, Unreal, you know, that one's a piece of shit. You know, that's why Hell, Hellblade's going to look fucking absolutely terrible and run absolutely terrible. Yeah. It's because of Unreal, not the Xbox console. And the only thing you'll get now is people would say, well, all you're doing is bashing Xbox. I have a question for you. Why aren't you bashing them? Why is it? Wh- wh- we, we constantly bash at Xbox. What, what about you? All, all you're doing is fucking going up to Sony and going... <laughs> Come on. Come on, Reforge. 
You had a you had a W earlier. Now you got a giant fucking L, a steaming pile L on the floor now. What? Why aren't you bashing them? Aren't you angry? Aren't you dissatisfied? Yeah, but I am. But I'm not going to go run to their competitor, which is fucking PlayStation in a situation, and saying they're doing better, even though they're doing the same shit and giving me the same fucking garbage. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to move to fucking PC. And the only reason why I have an Xbox these days is to play with my friends. Because my friends, uh, Boomy, if you're listening to this is kind of a roast to y'all. Y'all are fucking stubborn as hell. And y'all should have really moved to PC when I did. Because PC is so much fucking better. It's so much better. There's so much you can do. All the exclusives up here. The mods are just absolutely fantastic. But like I said, it's your own preference if that's the way you want it to be. I got I got extremely critical of Final Fantasy 16. Why? Because the marketing didn't line up with the product. Didn't line up with the product. <laughs> it's that simple it's extremely simple for me it's like you marketed this nope Jedi Survivor 9's and 10's from the review outlets game was not ready for market I was heavily critical of that why? I was already worried I was already worried when I heard Disney wanted a new Star Wars game every 6 months I told y'all I said that sounds like a terrible idea that's not how games come to market. Games should come to market when they're ready, not when some corporate, you know, bigwig snaps his fingers and said, I want a new game every six months. No, that's not how games come to market. Sadly, you're captain for Sony that wants to do that. Like, it doesn't matter to me. I don't, I don't care who it is. So it's like, my question is, why aren't you bashing them? You keep coming at me like... No, nobody here in chat's doing it. Most of the people who used to come in here and defend Xbox ardently, they stopped showing up. Because I was given assurances that games weren't coming to the other platforms, and now they are. I was given assurances that, you know, we were going to get 60 FPS. I mean, do you guys remember the Starfield trailer? Oh, so-and-so said that Starfield 60 FPS. Do you remember that? And we don't listen to those people because they're full of shit. Just like Microsoft, just like Sony, just like Nintendo. Oh, it's gonna run. It's gonna run smoothly with that butter smooth thirty frames per second. That delicious 1080p when it runs like 720 fucking p. And then if you want to run 60 frames, it goes down to 580p. All these fucking companies are liars. Every last one of them. And not to mention too. Those little Xboxers, the little X, the Xbox fans that come into your chat, the reason why they're not debating you anymore is because you ban them. Because if anybody challenges your little soft little ego, you ban them. Just like you did me on Twitter. Hold on. Hold on a second. I called this SOB out one fucking time. One time. I fucking clowned on him hard. <sighs> come on. One fucking time I clowned on him. One time. He goes to block me. Just because one time I clowned on him. The Red Dragon, King Thrash, I've and J Dub, I've all dunked on multiple times. And they didn't pussy out. They took it like men. Even though I disagree with them. They took it like men. Same so-and-so that said Redfall was good. Like, you should be also saying this is not, this is not good. This is not what we were promised. This is not what was marketed. That's what the consumers. So why aren't you doing that with fucking Suicide Squad? You, you sat there for like, I don't remember. Astro, if you're in the chat, can you uh, remind the chat how long he sat in a fucking video coping and fucking balding over the fact that Suicide Squad failed, but he was still capping for the game. How long did he sit there? But he wasn't getting the same energy with uh, Suicide Squad. 
Hmm. Ought to do. Like, consumers are not under some law or some imperative. Like, we don't have, like, the Ten Commandments of the consumer. But there's this weird ideological thing happening where once you're committed to certain tenets, it's like you break from what the average consumer just does naturally. Huh? Are are you saying having standards is a bad thing, Reforge? Because it's not. Just, okay, for example, so me and Spec, right, we have... We have different standards for our games. Are you telling me I should follow him blindly because he he likes a certain game and how it's going? Is that what you're saying, Reforge? Because that sounds like fanboyism, and I don't fuck with fanboyism. I used to. I used to. But I don't anymore. The, the natural inclination of consumers is that when such a thing is promised and then not delivered upon, that's that's a problem. That's a value proposition that was false. It's it's that that is a common common instance where the market then responds. I I can't stand Reforge for long. This fucking idiot. <laughs> Mm. Mm -mm -mm. okay so oh wait is this the one with oh yeah 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 yeah. you guys are my audio engineers okay so please let me know if the audio is sounding just right i can make some changes guys he returns right jeff grubb has been busy he's with giant bomb and jeff i gotta say before i even let you talk i thought one of your tweets today was absolutely pulitzer i'm i'm at work and i'm laughing out loud literally literally he says uh game mess mornings happening in 50 minutes where i'll correct the record while i said motive considered making dead space to him still laughing and is no longer doing it it turns out that it ex- they explored it making dead space 2 and is now no longer doing it so the great jeff grubb who is with us tonight does a lot of work you guys know him on game s mornings uh giant bomb yeah he does do a lot of great work supposedly even though he's got a lot of shit wrong I a lot of it jeff welcome back to crossfire buddy i love that tweet this morning it made my day how you doing I'm doing I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic. What, what's there to be uh, upset about? Right. Everything's great. Everything's good. It's uh, <laughs> it's, you know, man, video game news. It's one of those <laughs> things where uh, that game of telephone can get out of hand sometimes. And uh, that one made me feel especially crazy. But, I, you know, I, what I realized uh, going when I woke up this morning yeah. was uh, this is the kind of thing where I'm like, oh, you know, that was kind of frustrating. That was annoying that I had to deal with that. And I'm, then I remember it's like. He really does rambling. Like when I do these news stories, it causes problems for these developers and publishers all the time, which I always say was never the goal. I'm never trying to do that. Right. But it's like, oh, so I got a little put out. Well, who am I to get upset by it? At the end of the day, it's all just fun. It's all literally just fun in games. Yeah, absolutely. And you even reiterated that on this morning's uh, 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 games mess. And I, I love that you said that because it, it is what it is. And honestly, you know, Jeff, tonight we've got topics to go over. We have questions. <laughs> right, Ash, and I'm just thinking this. And I'll even say it on the air. You don't have to answer by no means. But I bet you there's a ton of people that would love the not, not the gaming industry. OK, there's plenty of executives and PR folks that go on for that. I'm intrigued still by the world that you're in because how you get this information. And I, I know you can't reveal source is that's not coming out tonight or on any show but how it all goes down and how mm, mm. Oh, la, la, la. ah man i'm trying to find that one where they were just really shitting on dead space i can't i don't think i found it i don't think i even bookmarked it honestly fuck him that's all i gotta say fuck him Okay, so y'all ready for some cringe? Y'all ready to swarm and just go, ah. Let's go do some X-Vault. All right, everybody, welcome back to another X-Vault Gaming video. X-Vault here, and today, yes, we have some more salt for you in regards to 30 frames per second, in regards to Square Enix and more port begging so we have some great examples here and without further ado 
tweet or post. I'm level 60, but didn't play since the game launched. Oh, man. And uh, I, I know Jez was not the taking too much of this. Let me know what you think. But Jez here real quick. Fallout 76 players. Is everything supposed to feel like a bullet sponge or am I doing something wrong? LOL. OL. I'm level 60, but didn't play since the game launched. Oh, man. And uh, I, I know Jez was not the only one really hyping this up before and after the Bethesda acquisition. Uh, so the fact that he hasn't touched it since and now he is revisiting Fallout 76 and, and what's going on with Fallout 76 is either you stay with this game pretty often, you're a frequent visitor as a player. Get the fuck on with it. All Jez was doing was asking for a simple fucking question. Holy fuck. God, imagine stretch stretching on a fucking dumbass tweet. Seriously, oh my fucking god. This, this is not even salt. This is just a general question he's asking Fallout 76 players. Or you just don't go back to it. Now, it sounds like he didn't go back to it. Why Why is he jumping into Fallout 76? This was, this was a post not that long ago. <laughs> he's, he's got examples of not even, not even talking about first party Give games and being chat. dry here. He had Dragon's Dogma 2 and other things still on the Xbox console. And we're hopping over to 76. And you totally forgot how the game plays. Yes, most enemies are like a sponge, sir, because you are in game. Or I don't know what the you know the cap is at this point, but you're towards end game at the very least. And if you're not, you're climbing. It's always been that way. It's been meant to be kind of like Elder Scrolls 6 ish. It's kind of meant to be more like MMO ish. And that's kind of what's going on. So I find <laughs> Oh my god, rambling. I had I okay, to be honest, I wasn't sure what that was rambling so i had to take a take it off screen real quickly to look at it oh my god so everybody sees bald mr baldy over here mr mr clean over here right mr discount mr clean right let's go back a bit because he's he, you were just fucking born the worst i thought i was the worst salt content creator but this dude is absolutely fucking worse So, here's a good fucking picture of him. Here's here's X-Bolt right here, right? Right, chat? <laughs> You're wrong for that one, rambling. You're fucking wrong. Oh, my God. my eye however let's let's keep going here so um what i want to share as well is just a quick post i know i kind of mentioned this before from clobril um but here we have a quick post here in regards to the 30 frames per second again and just want to kind of reiterate hey you know what wouldn't touch anything 30 frames per second but now it's just the initiative that is just going to be the way of things at least until the next xbox series console so clobril uh how X Vault, for the love of God, has your fucking brain melted? How are they? <laughs> oh. How are they begging for for frames? How in the fuck are they begging for frames? Nope, nope, I can't, I can't stand it. I can't stand how fucking stupid he is. How does anybody sit here in his comment section listening to this crap? Keep exposing the Xbox mediocrity. Takes 10 years for Final Fantasy XIV to come to Xbox. Oh my fucking God. Nope. Nope. The land of the fucking idiots. Nope. 
we're gonna do a video about Choppa. This one kind of fell into my lap, just like the what other videos did. And I was like, you know what? Let me do a video on it. I mean, not a video. Let's so let's just, let's have it on stream. Let's enjoy ourselves. The Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection is in a really weird spot right now, and for anybody who's, you know, not in the loop about this game or what's going on, this is obviously two classic Battlefront games that have been remastered and basically upscaled for the next generation of consoles, and it's been sitting at an overwhelmingly negative review on Steam. And you might be asking... Totally justified for being negative, because they, that, when that game launched, holy fuck, it was terrible absolutely terrible the fucking fighting mechanics were absolutely terrible they didn't the, actually the this release the classic collection that that got released was actually even worse than the fucking star wars battlefront being re when it was originally launched how the fuck you managed to do that i will never understand yourself why if you have no clue what's been going on with it or or why but there's a lot of interesting developments that's happening with the situation as well because this has been one of the most disastrous video game launches of all time the only other title i can really equate it to is the launch of the halo master chief collection this feels very similar in so far no shit no 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 i'm gonna tell you right now at least i could play a couple games of the battlefront classic but the Master Chief Collection, when they released that to the public, that was worse. That was worse. Good luck finding a game. Good luck even trying to boot up campaign. Good luck trying to do anything with the money that you, that, with this game that you purchased with your hard-earned money. Good luck. As yeah, these classics got released, and it's practically non functional in every single way. And Aspire, who are the studio that produced the Battlefront Classic Collection, are being absolutely raked over the coals by the public. And in some sense, I do think much of it is justified. There are a few things that I'm absolutely baffled by. There it is. There's the corporate boot looker. There it is, Chad. There it is. Nice and 4K glory. Oh, oh, oh. Well, some of them I agree, but some of them I just don't agree with being raked over the coals with. Go fuck yourself, dude. How they ever got greenlit or, or was even past QA testing, I have no idea how some of this stuff worked. But the main problem people have with the Battlefront Classic Collection, for the most part, is the fact that the multiplayer just simply does not work. There's a myriad no shit. of other technical issues, you know, textures not loading in properly, glitches within the game itself, mm -hmm. and apparently the game on PC is in a far worse state than it is on any console version. I've been playing... Yeah, PC was worse. PC was absolutely worse. But console was having the same problems too. So I don't know exactly what you're talking about, buddy. mostly on PlayStation 5, so while a lot of the problems I have not faced myself, to some degree I have experienced my fair share of bugs and hitches in the game and just things that really don't function properly, but for the most part, everything outside of the multiplayer seems to be relatively intact. Now with that being said, the Battlefront classic drama goes a bit deeper than you might be expecting because not only is the multiplayer not really working, although they have released a day one patch that's about 17 gigs and it's done a lot for the quality of the no it hasn't no it fucking hasn't that 17 gigabyte patch update that they push <sighs> still having problems still having problems i'm still having problems connecting my lightsabers against people my shots connecting to people even though it's directly on them on their fucking head yeah the 17 gigabyte patch update really fixed it game admittedly and it's made the multiplayer a lot more functional than it was on day one i believe the problem is aspire is now fighting to gain you know public opinion back to get their reputation and more importantly restoring the reputation of the game because as we all know it's really hard to win back public opinion when a game launches and is a complete and utter disaster That's right. yeah it is and i don't think they're gonna get it back because the pre the previous games that they did release they've been flopping too that's what I've been hearing online from the, the spear, I should say. People are not happy.
and it's totally justified. And you managed to fuck up a cult classic like this. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a shit stain on your record. You're not going to be able to remove. Really funny. Aspire released a statement a couple of days ago. It's actually like, I don't know, 24 hours after the launch of the game. And they're essentially saying like, yo, lads, thank you for all the support on, on battle on the classic collection. At this point, I don't think the word support is the right to use because they were being literally raked over the coals. Um, how is that not support? We bought the game to, to <laughs> how, how is that not support? How is that not supporting the developers? Even giving them feedback is support too. Oh, we're not allowed to air our grievances. Fuck that. I, I don't think people were really supporting this as much as they say, but I understand what they're getting at. Uh, they're just trying to reassure the community that they are still working on it, and I think this was just a couple of hours before the actual like first day one patch, which admittedly is a good update, I will say that. We live in a world in which the state in which a game launches in is almost never how it is, even like a day or two later. There's always a big day one patch that has to address a multitude of issues to usually get it to where it should have launched in the beginning. For yeah, yeah. You know why? Because we're all sick of it. We're that's why they're getting backlash. They had the most easiest fucking layup ever, ever, and they fucked it up. They still fucked it up. They didn't need to like make it prettier. They didn't need to add like additional. They needed to add additional shit. They're gonna put it into a collection. But my point still remains, though. This was the easiest fucking layup you could have ever gotten. This is like fucking Game Freak saying, we're going to put Pokemon. F ah, it would have been fine if Mike. Out. But it's like Game Freak saying that they're going to port over Pokemon Fire Red with additional content that's been cut. Port it over to the Switch. Then they release it and they're going to have like online functions and the many other things, right? Then they release it to the fucking Switch. Online doesn't work. The content that you're venturing around is wiping out your game save. You can't access the the exclusive Pokemon that's the content on there. Come on. Really? For full disclosure, I ended up getting a review copy of the Classic Collection. And even in the time that, you know, in between me playing it before its public release and when I had it, the game was very different. All of the menus had, like, different UIs. I mean, like, the whole structure was not the same as it is now, like the launch version. And even heroes were different. Asajj Ventress and Kit Fisto had entirely different animations and movesets, which just makes me feel like they were scrambling to the very last minute to somehow, like, get this game in a working order like they weren't even done animating heroes by the time i got a copy then why the fuck release it get that fucking patch update on there then push it to the public holy fuck they could have delayed this another week or two another week or two because they could have came out of public and said well we need a little extra time to help with the polish because we've noticed some bugs in this game and then we were going to release it to the public i'll bet you guys 10 fucking dollars right now that if nobody called out all these problems within this game, that Asmir would have not have fucking fixed this game at all. No, none. None. If nobody called out the problems that were in this game, they would not have fixed it. Bet. We should have known right then and there that something was going to go badly wrong because if they don't even have stuff like that finalized and in a working order, I can't imagine something as complex as getting online multiplayer to run smoothly would be in any better position. Now, I want to be fair for a moment because I do think part of it is the fact that we expect as modern gamers to have an online experience that is as smooth as modern games for the most part. And I don't think these 20-year-old games structurally are capable of that honest yes they are yes they are that's why we paid for the collection so we can have fucking dedicated servers a functioning fucking game that's why we paid for it not that they're not able to be functional and run smoothly. I mean, they had online functionality back in the day, but they were made for very different tech, and also the games are somewhat archaic. So I can understand the multiplayer not being the smoothest experience. That's not an excuse. 
That's so not a fucking excuse. When Microsoft, uh, what was it? The backwards compatibility brought Halo Reach to the Series X. It ran smoothly, perfectly fine. Online functioning was working perfectly fine. There was nothing wrong with it. It was the easiest fucking layup for Xbox. And they, they knocked it out of the park. What are these guys' excuses in that situation? What, what's their excuse? And yeah, Rambling makes a good point a good point in this situation. CSGO still works perfectly fine. Smite is like fucking really old. And it still works perfectly fine. Little bugs here and there. But it works. And it's generations old. Hell, Destiny 2. Destiny 2 released on the Xbox One and PS4. Works perfectly fine. Destiny 1 came on the Xbox 360 and PS3. Works perfectly fine to this day. So what's their fucking excuse? Experience, but smooth is very different to functional. And when I played it online recently, the game was hardly functional at all, which is depressing. But the thing is, I do still feel that most of the single player content is relatively intact. Now, here's where stuff with the classic collection gets oh, weird. Oh, though, hallelujah. 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 The single player content still works, guys. Even though you paid for both multiplayer and story mode. Oh, hallelujah. Story mode still works. Ha <laughs> ha. Bit more down the rabbit hole. Aspire Studios have been accused of stealing animations from high profile modders in the Battlefront community, most in particular Asajj Ventress and really Kit Fisto. And the thing is, these modders completely made all of these animations and movesets, and Aspire basically just lifted them without any compensation or credit to the modders. Now, I understand it'd probably be hard to credit like modders in the official version of the game itself. No, it's not. No, the fuck it's not. You have end game. You have credits within the game where you're crediting people. You can fucking do that. It's not that fucking hard. You just go to your computer, okay? Okay. You go to your computer, okay? Just type it the fuck in, and there you go. What is so fucking hard at giving credit to people that's deserved? Like, wh wh what's the problem with that? Or saying, huh, you know what? We did take this from the from these people. Here you go. Here's some money. Thank you very much for your help, and we appreciate it. Oh, hey, would you like a job over here since you put so much time into this? You did an excellent job. Oh, yeah, you, you want a job? Okay, here you go. But even just compensating them for their work would have been something, but it doesn't seem that like that was the case, and they're definitely under fire about that. It appears that there was no effort on Aspire's end to even, you know, reach out to these modders and contact them, or even compensate them, or just work out some kind of deal that is agreeable for both parties so that everybody get, gets what they want. There was no kind of negotiation or compromise at all, and that makes Aspire look really bad. I totally agree with that, and that's the thing is Aspire, when when looked at its worst, you could say the Battlefront Classic Collection is recycling an old game through AI upscaling, which they didn't really even do much work themselves. The multiplayer is non-functional, and they have stolen animations. If you want to look at the Classic Collection in the worst light possible, this is it. It's, it's basically a rehashed game with AI doing the work and stolen animations. So... so they barely put any fucking work into this game, right? If this is what you're saying is to be true. They put any barely fucking work into this. They released it to the public thinking they're going to make a quick cash grab. And you're trying to justify. <laughs> oh, this is why I love doing fanboy content. This is why I love it. Because you get the stupidest opinions on live on 4K. Does Aspire really deserve credit for making this or for now patching no. it and make it more functional? Well, that's really up to you. The problem is I feel like they've already lost in the court of public opinion. With a disastrous launch, it's really hard to get people, you know, back on track and on your side. They have No, it isn't. No. No, it fucking isn't. Oh, what's the name of that fucking game that re released so horribly as a PlayStation exclusive? Oh boy, I'm going to have to look this one up now, chat. 
It was a space game. I can't remember it. Oh my good. No Man's Sky. That's the name of it. No Man's Sky. That game released in a horrible fucking state. But then the developers shut the fuck up. They got to busy work and started fixing the game. And now look, look, the game is absolutely fantastic state as it now. Because they actually put some... God, oh my God. It's not that hard. Okay? Like... Holy fuck, this argument. Had everybody in a chokehold before this release. They had the entire community on their side before the game even launched. All they had to do was release these two classic experiences with a relatively functioning game, and that's about it. I mean, honestly, besides the bugs and glitches, those things have been ironed out. I think people being upset with the lack of... <laughs> the bugs are still there, dude. I don't know what the fuck you're smoking multiplayer functionality is totally fair but the game is also not really built to be a modern multiplayer experience in my opinion this game is only worth buying if you're planning on playing this like couch co-op and the reason i say that specifically couch co-op is you can play the online experience and it's going to be fine like i actually think in probably a couple weeks time the online experience for both battlefront one and two will be okay they've already addressed a lot of the issues like not being able to invert flight controls and stuff like that many of these things that you know should have been just givens for the launch i'm not saying the online experience is going to be equivalent to a modern game i still think it's going to feel and play very archaic no matter what they do to it just because these games are so damn old but i the reason i say Th I those are not excuses Th those are not valid excuses i'm sorry the game that i'm sorry you bought a product that they advertise for you to play online but now that you want to fucking subjugate to, oh, it's just play this on Coach Co-op. Then what was the point of buying the fucking collection then? I might as well just go back onto Steam and buy the game separately. What was the fucking point? looks nice like this is going to be much better than trying to you know co-op it on pc but that's the thing if you're just wanting to play it by yourself or do some you know do the online experience or play the campaigns even you can buy the classic battlefront games on pc for cheaper than what the classic collection is you can get the originals on steam for like five to ten bucks and that is way better than the 30 that you'll need to spend to get the classic collection at this point but if you're really looking to only play like interested in like the single player content the campaigns are like galactic com come on what is going on with my internet i swear to god conquest all that much then i don't really think this is going to be worth your time even after all of these patches and you know bug fixes come out i just don't know if that's really going to be worth now aspire is at least not abandoning the game from uh, from what it appears right now but modders have even taken it into their own hands to try to fix the classic collection god there bless the modders if you're playing on pc god you bless can play a more smooth and refined experience than what aspire released i'm sure they're going to release official official patches from here on out that will try to address the Problem. Oh, let's hope Asper doesn't steal that from modders. It'd be a real damn shame if we found out that they stole that from modders. But the fact that the community is taking it into their own hands already is pretty insane. But I just, I don't know if Aspire really deserves the credit for all this because, again, it's an old game that was essentially visually upscaled through AI and then they stole animations of heroes and then released it with a non-functional multiplayer. That's the absolute worst way to look at it and I get that's incredibly pessimistic, but I really do hope that somehow they're able to turn the narrative around and people will come back to the classic collection because there is a ton of good content to experience on it but again you can experience a lot of this content for much cheaper on pc if you're just planning on playing it alone well that's one great thing i agree with this dude buy it on fucking pc be so much easier good god all right chat so for the last video for this stream We'll do a Harmon. We will do a fucking Harmon. Or, I mean, we could... Oh, I thought his fucking videos got removed for a second. Never mind. So, chat. Which one sounds good? Hmm. You know what? You know what? I am feeling to either do 
this one right here just to send this stream off with a bang or we do what was the other one again I, I guess maybe we could just you know what let, let, let's just do this one just to send out the stream with a bang oh shit no no cobra you got a point you got a point Now, just to warn y'all, I'm not very familiar with the fa the uh, the Fallout universe. Not really that familiar. But we'll go ahead and watch it. The much anticipated Fallout TV adaptation has finally released. And who am I kidding? We all knew this would be bad. Is anyone surprised? I mean, a single person. I made a video just reacting to the first trailer and knew this would be an absolute butchering. And why is that? Well, not just because it's Amazon, and we all know from Rings of Power reacting to the first trailer and knew this would be an absolute butchering. How is that an absolute butchering? Look at those guys. That looks fucking better than the Halo this looks so much fucking better than what the fucking Halo shows have been providing on Paramount. Holy shit. And why is that? Well, not just because it's Amazon, and we all know from Rings of Power and various other shows they've made that they really don't care about the source material of any series, franchise, no matter how beloved. I mean, if they Yo. didn't care about Lord of the Rings, they don't care about the source material of any series franchise oh shit oh hey yo i might actually go watch this show holy shit that actually looks good guys no matter how beloved i mean if they didn't care about lord of the rings they sure as hell were not going to care about fallout but not just that, we know Bethesda doesn't care about Fallout, at least the lore, the canon, anything that they weren't directly involved with. And honestly, in some cases, even some of their older games, they don't care about continuity in the least bit. Now for this- That's bullshit. That's bullshit. They care. They care. I can't remember the specific tweet because it was such a long time ago, but they do care about it. So what the fuck are you going on about, Synthetic Man? sake of maintaining relevancy i'm only going to review the first episode in this video and i'll review the whole season next week every single episode dropped at the same time so on the one hand that's totally a good thing because this will be gone and forgotten in no time flat because i don't think anyone who's a real fan of fallout is going to consider this canon especially because of all of the retcons inconsistencies what retcons? it's obvious the showrunners didn't give a single shit about the fallout universe yet todd howard said this is canon i fucking hate todd howard at this point i don't care if he's not directly involved with any of bethesda's projects and he's basically just a glorified salesman the face of the company yeah here you are bitching about it synthetic man company doesn't matter he's still taking the fucking blame so before i start spoiling everything in the intro we might as well just get into the breakdown so episode one begins in 2077, right before the bombs drop. We see Walton Goggins playing one of the main characters, the ghoul. Yes, they literally call him the ghoul when there are thousands of ghouls at minimum in the Fallout universe. He is the ghoul. But as of right now, he is Cooper Howard, a Marine veteran who is famous for Get something. This fucking I don't think they explain it. Shitty ass game out of my fucking face, synthetic man. The fuck is wrong with you? In this scene, but they imply he played some kind of cowboy character. I don't know if it's for commercials or military propaganda. And now he just does birthday parties for alimony payments. And I find this even more funny because his kid is mixed race. So his black wife- Hey, excuse me. What, what's the problem with that, Synthetic Man? What, what, what's the problem with that, Synthetic? I fucking squeeze me. Oh, 
Oh yeah, puppet. If you're wondering what what uh, what game that is, it's that fucking uh, Dead by Daylight ripoff game that's been skinned. O- it's the basically the Dragon Ball Z game has been skinned over with like the Dead by Daylight mechanics. Except you're a you're the villain that's going around killing these survivor end gaming these survivors and just trying to stop them from doing their objectives. It's fucking stupid. Huh, that's interesting, Devastator. Fuck, I need to get into Fallout. If that's this, if that's the type of lore we're going to be dealing with, oof. They've divorced him, and now he plays fucking birthday parties. How blackpilling is that? And at the risk of getting a shit ton of dislikes from normies, just like my review of the first episode of The Last of Us, I find this even more funny because if you know anything about marriage statistics, you would know that white male black female actually has the lowest divorce rates. So in a way, you could almost say this is anti-propaganda, but I still think it's promoting race mixing as- What's the problem with that synthetic man? Fucking say it. Say it out loud, you pussy. I fucking dare you. Hey, listen. Yeah, deep? Like, I'm, I'm not a big Fallout fan and I barely know any of the lore, those fucking suits right there? Okay, we're at three minutes, basically. Come on. There it is. Or in various other shows they made that they really don't care. An absolute butchering. Those suits right here for the Brotherhood of Steel, I think it's the Brotherhood of Steel. I gotta brush up on my lore. Those suits right fucking there look really fucking good. They look better than the fucking, uh, the Malinair suit... Mount, I, I can't pronounce the, the basically the Spartan armor on fucking Paramount. These hey, look listen. fucking good. They look fantastic. And you're going to sit here. It's dog shit. It's dog shit. Go fuck yourself, synthetic man. As basically every show on television does. You know, for as woke as video games are these days, TV and movies blow the gaming industry out of the water. Basically, every streaming show I've tried to watch with my mother has had some form of propaganda in it, and usually multiple types, whether it's race-related, gender-related, LGBT-related, it's you- Oh no, the ra- the races are mixing together. Oh, boo-hoo. Grow the hell up, Synthetic Man. We're not in the fucking n- 1920s. Maybe that's what we should send your fucking ass back to. Yeah, that uh, that devastator. Yeah, that I understand. Yeah, that I know for sure. Like that's that's like the basic level surface I know about the lore. Usually all of the above. But anyway, getting back to Fallout, the rich guy who's hosting the birthday party calls Walton Goggins a communist because he won't stick his thumb up in reference to the supposed safe distance from a nuclear bomb implying that Walton Goggins opposes the war with China. Nothing really comes of this. This whole scene is obviously supposed to give you an idea what the retro future culture of 2077 looks like. But if a modern Marxist rewrote history and added diversity everywhere. Now, it's not like in the original Fallout games, all the characters were white. But there's something uncanny about this whole thing. We'll put it at that. I'm not going to make a huge deal over it. So yeah, anyway, shortly after the first nuke drops on LA, the rich guy punches his black friend, not letting him in their fallout shelter, and Walton Goggins rides off on a horse with his daughter on Oh, I bet you got off on that one, synthetic man. I bet you went into the corner, grabbed your fucking hog, and you whip that hog fucking hard like, oh, oh, he beat him. He beat him senseless. Oh god, yeah, he's my hero. Fuck synthetic man. Oh no, because chat wanted it, pain. So you know what? This is good. This is good. I'm gonna say it now. This this is a good choice. Even though I barely know any lore about the fall about Fallout, this was a good choice. On the back, as if you could fucking outrun a nuke. They literally just told us in the previous scene the safe distance is the size of a thumb. I think that explosion might be a little bit bigger than that. 
I know they did this to have a really dramatic scene, but it just comes across incredibly idiotic. Especially since three more nukes drop, one which is within a mile of the house. Whatever, so anyway, moving on, we fast forward to the present, and I want to point out, this takes place after all of the games. And more importantly, 15 years after Fallout New Vegas. You're gonna- Let me hear that again dramatic scene but it just comes across incredibly idiotic especially since three more nukes drop one which is within a mile of the house whatever so anyway moving on we fast forward to the present and i want to point out this takes place after all of the games and more importantly 15 years after fallout new vegas you're gonna want to remember that considering this okay. takes place on the west coast so okay. now we meet hold our on. true hold on it takes after Okay, if I'm, if, if I'm hearing him right, this is after. So how exactly is it retconning the Fallout universe again, chat? When it's after all, all of it? Am I missing something, chat? Somebody tell me. Somebody, somebody tell me I'm missing something and I'm not just paying attention. Nah, thank you. Thank you, Battle Royale, for watching my videos. I really appreciate it, man. I really do. Protagonist Lucy, a resident of Vault 33, which I guess was another control vault. Either that or it's some kind of multi-vault experiment. As they fail to adequately explain in the show, Vault 31, 32, and 33 are all directly connected to each other. And so Lucy is applying for an arranged marriage with one of the other vaults. They show off all of her various skills. And of course, she just so happens to be good at basically everything. Definitely not a Mary Sue, guys. They train you in these vaults for different type of situations, dude. The fuck do you want her to do? Be in the kitchen all the damn time cooking? Bro, Synthetic Man, I don't know how the fuck Synthetic Man is still on this platform. And of course she gets approved. We find out her father is the overseer. Her younger brother is this tiny, huge-nosed, cowardly, incompetent beta male. And also that Lucy fooled around with her cousin. Messing around with your cousin, it's all well and good for kids, but it's not a sustainable long-term sexual practice, you know? Who, despite being a tall, kind of more Chad-looking dude, is also a complete coward, worthless puss. Long-term sexual practice, you know? Who, despite being hold a on, tall... Hold on. And of course, she gets approved. We find out her father is the overseer. Let me, let me her see younger this, brother is this tiny, huge nosed, cowardly, in. Oh no, he's a Jew. Oh no. Fucking synthetic man's gonna have a fucking stroke in a minute. Competent beta male. And also that Lucy fooled around with her cousin. Messing around with your cousin. How does this dude look like a Giga Chat again? Oh, that's right, because he's white. Okay, I get it. Oh, thank you for making your opinion clear on that one. It's all well and good for kids, but it's not a sustainable long-term sexual practice, you know? Who, despite being a tall, kind of more Chad-looking dude, is also a complete coward, worthless pussy. Get used to hearing that. And so the members of Vault 33 meet up with the members of Vault 32, and we find out her soon-to-be husband is actually a white guy and not ugly. Shocking. But don't worry, they ruin that pretty shortly. At the wedding, Lucy asks her new husband, Monty, what his sperm count is. You know, I think I'm actually starting to like this girl. And even more based, as soon as they get back to her room, Monty strips naked and they just straight up have sex. So I guess one good thing came out of this show. But of course, everything goes to shit. As the big schnoz little brother soon discovers, one of the members of Vault 32 is dead and rotting. 
and it turns out raiders somehow got into vault 32 killed everyone and lucy gets stabbed but she manages to save herself in the most cliche hollywood way possible by smashing a glass on his head and then like slicing his face she heals herself with a stim pack and then heads into the armory and grabs a fucking trank gun i guess all the real guns were already gone and she witnesses a bunch of her friends get horrifically murdered, men just getting the absolute shit beat out of them. The only competent- Bro, that sounds cool as fuck. Holy shit. You're- you're- yo, that sounds like a show I really want to watch. Males at all are the Raiders. But her pregnant best friend, after getting stabbed in the eye with a fork, gets a hold of an SMG and starts mowing down raiders. Wow! My god, it's Wolfenstein 2 all over again. This is the cringiest shit ever, seeing pregnant women be badass. I fucking- So what? She was able to pull it off. whoop de doo This is the Fallout universe where the craziest shit happens. This is where you're questioning it? Really? Really? I hate this propaganda. It is so transparent. Whatever, moving on. Lucy's husband turns out to still be alive and almost kills her, but her dad manages to save her, being the only competent male in the show. And Lucy gets to see how brutal he is, which I'm pretty sure is implying that he's been to the surface before. But all of the survivors manage to get captured anyway. We see that the Latina overseer is the real villain of the show. Yes, this middle-aged brown woman is supposed to be this mega badass evil raider we're supposed to be intimidated by modern media is such a joke we're not even halfway through the episode and i already don't want to watch anymore but fuck it let's just get through this evil raider chick gives the overseer an ultimatum either choose his daughter lucy or choose the rest of the residents of the vault oh yeah synthetic man was not bullied enough in high school he was not Obviously, he chooses his daughter, but instead of killing all the others, the Raiders just kidnap the dad and then just let the others run away as a bomb timer goes off. Oh, and Raider Bitch reveals that she knows Lucy's mom. Wow, what a mystery. I'm so intrigued. What the fuck was the point of this scene? All right, now we get to meet our final main character, Maximus, and it's another pussy ass black guy. You know, it's one thing that every single TV show. Mo oh, he's not talking about Wolfenstein too. He's talking about that wo uh, that uh, that one Wolfenstein game with both of his twin daughters, and they became the main characters. That one was horrible. That one I have to agree with on that. That Wolfenstein version was bad. Movie and now video game has a diverse cast, but do you have to have every black man be a fucking pussy in modern media? You know, as harsh as I was on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, at least Barrett is a cool character, okay? You can sell me on a diverse character. If they're cool, if they just act like a person, but they happen to have a different color of skin, you know, I know this is very stereotypical shit that basically everyone said by now, but it's true. It doesn't matter how many times it's said, it's accurate. And yeah, so he gets hazed by all the other Brotherhood of Steel initiates, and he gets saved by a trans man. I'm not joking, dude. There's probably gonna be some coping and seething, but no, that is not a tomboy, that is not a masculine female, no, that is a woman who identifies as a man, you know it to be true. And she's more of a man than Maximus is. This is fucking embarrassing. What? Okay. Does, does, does a person go out in the fucking show and just parade around and lecture the person? No, seriously. Who's watched the show at that point? I want to know. Does the person right there, the person that Synthetic Man's had a fucking major titty attack about, does that person go and lecture that person? Anybody know? I'm watching chat right now. So th synthetic man's a lying little fucking bitch. Okay. No, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised.
Whatever. Anyway, moving on. I have to get through this, guys. I can't take it anymore. Everything I love has been destroyed. Let's just fast forward through the rest of this episode. Okay, so another Pridwin shows up. Maybe it's the same Pridwin from Fallout 4. I don't know. They don't confirm or deny in this episode. We see some Brotherhood Knights in T-60 power armor show up. And I don't know. It looks okay. I know some people are like, uh, it looks like shitty cosplay. I think the costumes look okay. It's when they're CGI that it looks bad. In the next scene, Maximus and the girl. That doesn't even look like bad CGI. It, it really doesn't. The fuck are you smoking? Look, look, they even had the fucking cranes there too from what I think it was Fallout 3 or Fallout 4. Right, we used to see this all the time. Look how fucking cool. Look how much they respect the fucking lore. I'm sorry, these people deserve my fucking time for the show. Oh boy, sneak away and look at some power armor, and Maximus is a flashback to when he was saved by the Brotherhood of Steel. Then we see the Initiates play some brick ball. Look, I know they're trying to be cute about like, oh, post-apocalypse, they don't understand how sports work, but really throwing bricks into a fucking square hoop? And we learn some of the... It's the end of the... It's the, it's the apocalypse. What do you think, synthetic man? Of course they're going to find anything, any way to entertain themselves. Why do people throw rocks at things? Because they find it entertaining. Initiates have been chosen to be squires. And of course, Maximus doesn't get chosen, but the girl boy does. And so the next morning, as G.I. Jane puts on her boots, a trap placed inside her boot shreds her leg. And to no surprise, Maximus is blamed for this and taken away to be interrogated. Back at Vault 33, Lucy tries to get the council to send out a search party for her dad, but the fat black soy jack on the council is too chicken shit, as is the rest of them. And so Lucy teams up with Big Schnoz and... No shit. No shit, they're scared shitless. Chat, right now. Would y'all go out and search for your loved one when, they, when, you, when it's involved in the Fallout world? God knows what's out there. Ghouls fucking what is it blood claws can't remember what they're called but all the creatures out there would you go out there and do it I, i'm sorry i i do care about my family members but if you decided to go if you're out there and you're stranded and you're you're absolutely fucked maybe i would but in the fallout universe with all that crazy shit out there who you're making me contemplate you're making me contemplate i'm sorry Sweet home, Alabama. Death claws. De death claws. Thank you. I know it was claws something, but where the fuck did blood claws come from? What the, what the fuck, Gara? Leave the vault themselves. Of course, her brother, being a massive pussy, won't go with her. Her cousin actually wants to, but she knows he's incredibly incompetent and also a coward. So she tranks him and leaves the vault by herself. Now, this is where the show jumps the shark. We find out that Vault 33 is located next to Venice Beach in the heart of the Boneyard. Now, if you know anything about Fallout lore, you would know that the NCR dominated this territory, brought civilization back to it. There is no way in hell that Vault 33 was not contacted over the course of 100 years. And of course, to address the elephant in the room, Someone's going to have to answer that in the chat. How the fuck do you know for that, for a fact? How how do you know? How they're like, oh, those people must be gone. I don't think we're there anybody going to survive in there. How the fuck do you know? How? How? Yeah, yeah, Astro, I'm starting to pick that up right now. I'm starting to think that he is just fake as fuck. Okay, okay, yeah, like, like I told you guys, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm this Omega fan like Synthetic Man is, okay? I'm not going to pretend. I barely know the surface level. Like, I played Fallout New Vegas, and that was pretty much it for all the deep lore dive I went through. That's about it. 
But then it came out to like Fallout 3, Fallout 4, and they were just buggy messes, and I dropped them. But after this show, I think I'm going to change my stance on that. I'm going to change that. But uh, from what I've been told in the chat, the NCR was spread very, very thin. So... <laughs> Oh, God. Synthetic Man is fake as fuck. Yeah, wait, that's right, though. Shadow, they avoid the fucking uh, the vaults, too. Oh, my God. Synthetic Man is fake as fuck. Boom. L.A. itself is a massive wasteland, like a featureless desert. What happened to the NCR? Well, at the time of me recording this, I was spoiled of future episodes. And apparently Shady Sands got nuked four years before the events of Fallout New Vegas. Yeah, that's how you know the showrunners didn't do the research. And yet, this show's canon, it's totally canon, guys, that the capital of the NCR got nuked before New Vegas. Yet it was never mentioned, and it's more than established that the NCR dominated California and brought civilization back. Fuck this show. Fuck Todd Howe. <sighs> Oh, synthetic man. Oh, you're snitching on yourself. Oh, you are fucking snitching on yourself. Oh, oh, I want to see in chat right now. Hashtag fake as fuck. I want to see it in chat. Hashtag fake as fuck. Oh, fuck. Now the pieces are starting to come together. Oh, fuck. Fuck Amazon. Bethesda is so beyond dead to me. It's insane. Everyone who likes Fallout 4 gets exactly what they fucking deserve with this show. What blows my mind is there's people who actually thought Starfield was going to be good. And even though the NCR capital was nuked, that doesn't explain how the Boneyard turned into a giant desert wasteland. But it's as simple as the showrunners didn't care explain how the boneyard turned into a giant desert wasteland <laughs> it doesn't explain how the boneyard became a giant way of sa wasteland of sand <laughs> I hope Nier sees this video. I know Nier is very heavily into the Fallout universe. I hope to God he sees this. Actually, I'll, I'll think I'll send this to him. Oh my fucking God. Even I barely, I barely fucking know about the Fallout fucking, what is it? The universe. Barely. Barely. But I'm not even, I even I don't have this type of fucking ego where I'm going to sit on my high horse and say this fucking type of vile of shit. But it's as simple as the showrunners didn't care. This is not made for the fans. This yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because if I see my fellow content creators saying like, this is pretty enjoyable, maybe a couple episodes are a little weak, and I see people like Frit, and I see... <sighs> God damn it. I mischief. I see so many other content creators giving honest opinions and pretty decent critique and saying this is pretty good. I'm going to trust them over your ass, synthetic man. Holy fuck. How does he have a fan base again? Oh, that's right. He's a grifter. This is made for normies who have heard of Fallout. It's made for women who won't even watch the show. And most importantly, it's made as a humiliation ritual. They will destroy everything you love and you will do nothing about it. At best, you'll vote. Oh, I wish he fucking would ban me. I would love to fucking him to do that. Little baby back bitch ain't got fucking nothing on me. Oh, you're going to ban me. Oh, go fuck yourself, synthetic man. I hope you see this. You and your garbage ass fucking takes and your garbage ass taste in your game. Yeah, go fly a fucking kite.
Yeah, well, yeah, Oryx brings up a good fucking opinion in this situation. If the creator, the original creator, approves of this, then that should be a flag for you to like, hey, go watch this video. Don't don't listen to people like fucking synthetic man over here and go watch it. If I see Angry Joe is you know giving praises to this show, even Angry Joe too, even though I don't really trust him that much after the Spider Man Two fiasco that he went through, I'll give this show a shot. Actually, you know what? Let's put the video on pause real quickly. Let's go see that tab real quickly. I want to go see that community tab. I want to see this man coping and seething. If you are a fellow noticer, you may have noticed that the Fallout review is getting brigaded by shills and the leftist ideology. This is nothing new to the channel, but I have decided to do something for I've resisted for four years. Actually banning people. This will no doubt be highly controversial, but I think it's time. I do think I owe you an explanation, though, because I think some of you are hard for its... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I love him. This man says, oh, you're a freedom fighter. You can think the only way, but if you don't think the same way I do, you're getting banned from the channel. You're a bitch, synthetic man. You're a female dog. You, you like to be one of those people that say, I am for the freedom of everybody to enjoy what they want to enjoy and have their own opinion. But if you don't align with mine, you don't deserve it. You know what? I'm going to read a little bit more into this. The reason I'm telling you this is because I am honest to a default. Bullshit. Other YouTubers like Actman and G-Man Lives just delete comments they don't like and nobody can prove it. I would rather you know about what this is going forward even if you unsub. I also want to shout out to Crilistios and Archias to Archcast for actually being critical of this show. I'm not sure what they think of me, but at least I know they're not sellouts. Hey, listen. Ooh, um. <laughs> ooh, buddy. Ooh, synthetic man. You, ooh, ooh. Mm. Yeah, Astro, that that fucking ego has been damaged. It's it's been fucking gutted. With your wallet and hope things get better. Yeah, that's worked out so great for us in the last decade. But whatever, I'm not. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Look at Suicide Squad. Everybody saw that fucking train wreck. Now it's fucking sleeping in the fucking dirt. Look at the Halo TV show. People are still boycotting it and it's still shit. There's, there's so many fucking examples I could bring up. I'm not going to fed post because I will legitimately get banned. Next scene, we get back to Maximus and he cries like a little baby bitch as the scribe interrogates him, accusing him of something he didn't do. And he makes almost no effort to defend himself. Eventually, he works up the courage to speak and just says he would gladly give his life for the Brotherhood. And the scribe rewards him by promoting him to Squire, taking the She-Man's place. Then we get a scene where She-Man doesn't blame him because she knows he would never do it because, again, he... Wow. Spoiler alert. It's like they have no idea who did it, but for a fact, he knows he didn't do it. Shocker. And it's more like the Brotherhood of Steel brought him in to make sure that he didn't do it. Oh, fuck, Synthetic Man is the fucking biggest idiot I've ever seen in my life. Oh, my fucking God. He's a little bitch boy who would never do anything wrong. What a great protagonist. And at his anointment ceremony, he gets a brand burned on the back of his neck by power armor, which is kind of cool, I guess. And now we get another massive... Oh, oh, that's cool. I thought it wasn't fucking... <laughs> I thought it wasn't respectable to the lore. Even though they're doing a lot of things that they do in the lore. Satanic man. You're a fucking fraud. You are a fat ass fucking fraud. The retcon. Apparently the enclave is still around. Yup. 
even though we see the last of their remnants in New Vegas, which are a bunch of fucking senile boomers. 15 years later, the Enclave is back with a vengeance. Maximus is tasked with finding one of their runaways who I guess is hanging with dog meat. And for the final scene of the episode, we wrap back around to Walton Goggins as we see a few mercenaries hey, dig up his corpse. Welcome to the family, Shane. Oh God, yeah. here we go again. Pete Hines has been vindicated. For those of you who don't know, there is a unmarked quest in Fallout 4 where you find a ghoul child who's been locked in like a fridge or something. I can't even really remember. The child has been in there for 200 years with no food or water, and you reunite him with his parents who are also ghouls. It's quite possibly the dumbest quest in any RPG of all time. And How? I'll tell you what the fucking worst fucking side quest that's ever been made. The one with a blind girl in Spider-Man 2. For the love of God, whoever designed that shit needs to be fucking fired. That story mode right there was okay. It wasn't like a 10 out of 10, but it was it was a pretty good one. I remember that one. That one was a good one. Fucking synthetic, man. I swear to God. Wait, wh wait. Uh, why do you say that, Astro? What, what do you think is disrespectful? Because he's playing the music? Yeah, I kind of would agree with that. Rightfully, fans pointed out how stupid it was, how it's been established in the original games that ghouls do eat and drink, and I believe even in Fallout 3, they have to eat and drink. But no, now ghouls are just immortal zombies. And Pete Hines, being a massive silly billy on Twitter, pointed out how nerds are all losers for caring about continuity. How exactly did he say that? It says, not interested in discussing how realistic things are in an alternate universe post-apocalypse game with, uh, with talking mutants and ghouls. How do they call him a loser? He just says he's not interested. Boy, when people start to wake up and start to see these inconsistencies like I'm starting to see them, oh, it's a different experience. You're right, why should I care about anything that happens in the story? I should just consume your product, you piece of shit. But now, over eight years later, Bethesda still has a chip on their shoulder about that one, and has confirmed in this show that ghouls can be buried underground in a coffin for who knows how long, and be perfectly fine. And for seemingly no reason at all, Walton got that ghouls can be buried underground in a coffin for who knows how long, Hey, chat, let me ask you something. Is he buried underground in a coffin? I I don't see that. Oh, looks like Synthetic Man's talking out of his fucking ass. Male empowerment story, that's really the most annoying thing. So while, yes, I did get kind of angry over certain things in this show, it's perfectly fine. And for seemingly no reason at all, Walton Goggins kills the three mercenaries. They weren't even hostile. They were offering to share a bounty with him, and he kills them. This show is fucking stupid. Okay, that was... So guess what, Synthetic Man? In this universe, guess what? I don't... In, in this universe, he doesn't have to share the bounty. If he wants to go... Wait, isn't that the same fucking reason that you, uh... Isn't that the same reason that you made that same criticism towards, what was it? Oh my God, I forgot the name of the game that they really re released recently. I keep forgetting. Isn't this the same thing that you criticized them for, for not having in their game, your, your own choice? So what if it wasn't that guy's choice to, well, end game the other people because he didn't want to share the bounty? Get the fuck out of here, synthetic man.
was episode one it sucked dick it ruined everything fallout's dead again honestly fallout's been dead to me since fallout 4 released and to even more fans after 76 so while yes i did get kind of angry over certain things in this show you know sometimes i ham things up for the reviews i honestly don't care that much i'm just tired of propaganda being shoved in my face more than anything and yeah, I mean, this show's woke as fuck. It's Starfield. diverse as hell. Yeah. It's yeah, he went on his fucking review about Starfield, getting all pissy about how he couldn't... How can I explain him? He couldn't do, like, bad things to people, but then he's going to criticize the fucking Fallout TV show for doing bad things. Weren't you fucking... None of that makes sense. None of it just... Mm. It's an obvious female empowerment story. That's really the most annoying thing of all. Lucy is an obvious Mary Sue. All of the men around her are incredibly pathetic and weak. How is she a Mary Sue? Because if I remember earlier, he said in his own review that she couldn't get the raider off of her. Her own father had to step in to get her off of him. I mean, get her off of him. Like, no. Fucking Christ. To get him off of her. This is the brain rot I get from Synthetic Man every time I watch a fucking video from him. How does that make her a Mary Sue again? Wouldn't she just be this all powerful, all powerful, powerful fucking person that could just do all the things by herself? She didn't need no man. But she had a fucking man, her own father, to come in and kill the raider? Synthetic man. You're slipping. The trans male character was more of a man than Maximus, one of our main characters. You would think black people would make more of a stir about this, but as you saw with my Spider-Man 2 review, no, they totally love Miles Morales, who's fucking Urkel incarnate. So I guess we're going to continue to see these characters in the future until showrunners and game developers start getting called racist for this pathetic beta male stereotype. And yeah, I don't think I need to bring up again how heavily they've shit on the Fallout lore already in the first episode. I'm really, really not looking forward to watching the rest of this. I just know when they show the huge crater where Shady Sands used to be, it's just going to be a giant middle finger to all the fans. And I've heard Mr. House also shows up in this show. And to spoil a plot point from later in the show, they confirm that vault Tech fired the first nuke, which completely ruins the main theme of Fallout. These fucking far leftists don't even listen to the opening monologue or the ending one. Oh my god, I'd rather listen to fucking Harmon Smith ramble. This, this man. Whew. War never changes. That's what the fucking series is about. But you stupid fucks are so obsessed with capitalism, you think it's about a uh, corporation bad. That's what Fallout's really about. The games literally tell you what the theme is word for word. Now that it's not America or China's fault that the world ended, the entire message of the series is ruined. I guess the silver line. It's all of our fault. If, if, if human society went down the way of Fallout, and if I remember correctly, it's the human race's fault, not China, not the USA, not India, not fucking, not Australia. Oh my fucking God. Whew. Like, really? Really synthetic, man? Really? Mining of all this is there's only a few gaming franchises I still even care about anymore, and it's only a matter of time till those. Oh yeah, yeah. I wonder which one of those franchises you recently abandoned. A rib, uh, abandoned. Doesn't rhyme with Dragon's Dogma too. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've been paying very Those are destroyed attention. too, and then I can truly be apathetic about the entire gaming industry. So yeah, as if I even had to tell you, don't watch this show. 
I mean, if you like this show on any level, I've lost any and all respect for you. In fact, I don't think I even view you as human anymore if you like this show. Yeah, I'll go that far. You can quote me on that shit. So please, for the love of God, do not hate watch this show. That's... Mmm. All right, chat. So the last one we could possibly do for the stream, because my brain's about to fucking absolutely fucking melt right now. We could do a Harmon Smith video or, 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 or. Oh, fuck. That's all I got left. God damn it. Fuck it. I guess a Harmon Smith video. Yeah, exactly, Astro. That's exactly what he's doing. But he refuses to acknowledge it. Go figure. Oh, God. Really, Indie Men? Oh, God. All right, I'll leave it up to chat then. I have spent the last two days Hold on. doing nothing. Shut the fuck up, Armin. Okay. What's up, everyone? So... But playing games on Steam. That's right. I got my. Uh, I wish it would stop that. All right, chat. So it's either Harmon Smith or Endyman. All right, if I'm pr pronouncing this dude's name right, well, pff, fuck it. Who honestly cares? All right, y'all pick. I'll be watching chat. I don't think I got to see that, Shane. All right, I guess we're watching Indie Man. Indie Man's got it. I'm going to have to learn how to do a poll. One, it's Endymion, and there's been some Endymion. shenanigans going on within the games industry again. I know, shocking, right? From the Fallout TV show retconning beloved past games and driving the entire fan base into a frenzy, Ubisoft confirming that they don't care about you whatsoever and showing customers they should not expect to own their games even if they buy them, and Shocker with Ubisoft, but that retcon? Not so sure, big boy. Not so sure.
Capcom has apparently bent the knee to the woke mind virus. There's a lot to go over, but let's start with Fallout because this is kind of a mess to put it lightly. This section of the video will have spoilers for the Fallout series as a whole, by the way. I'm going to talk about how the Amazon Prime show confirms who allegedly dropped the first nuclear bomb, and as well as how the show might have retconned a beloved game from the franchise. You know what? You know what I'm going to do? I don't know too much about the Fallout universe, and I probably should have done this with a synthetic man. With a synthetic man video, Jesus Christ, Carl. Whoever's in the Discord right now, go join general chat. We're going to have some fun. Whoever's got the aficionado of know pretty well of uh, the Fallout universe, I want you in here. To correct any mistakes that you see in here. Or, or I should say, go to, go to the waiting room in Discord. I'm going to pull... I'm going to maybe pull one or two people in. We're, we're going to get interesting with this one. Oh, you guys aren't in my Discord? Okay, let's fix that. Let's, let's fix that real quickly. Just as a bit of a warning too, you're going to have to verify when you join this Discord because uh, Gar over here ain't got fucking time to deal with fucking idiots. Okay, I'm going to post this in the channel. Well, in the channel chat in a second, guys. There it is, right there. There's a link for you guys. All right, like, like I said, if anybody wants to join and, you know, absolutely dunk on these people, you know, you're welcome to join the general chat. Just remember, go to streaming, like go to the tab where it says streaming, look for waiting room, and I'm going to pull you in. Just give it a minute, bam. We'll get this done. Hello, Devastator. I think you may have to push the talk. Hello, Devastator. You're muted, bro. (laughs) 
Have fun with that, <laughs> Jay. <laughs> Have fun with that. I don't know what's going on with Devastator, but Spec, if you want to join, because I know you know something about the Fallout lore, lore, go ahead and join, man. Ah, shit. Well, that's a fail on my end, then. Ah, you know what? Since that didn't work, we'll figure out something else. Screw it. Let's get back to it franchise still here all right let's get into it so i finished fallout on amazon prime recently i thought it was mostly fine myself i found the middle part of the show to yeah it's one of the buttons you gotta press and i'm still trying to figure it out with discord it's it's a mess it'd be an absolute slog and the show somewhat redeemed itself in its final episode but i personally didn't think the show was amazing Sure, it looked great and all that, but there were some issues, especially a big fat man nuke bomb part where Amazon Prime and Bethesda basically retconned Fallout New Vegas in a way. Or did they? Well... Oh, this one's gonna be good. Somehow retconned it. Okay. Let's explore that. We know that in New Vegas, the NCR, or New California Republic, had basically restarted society on the surface during the events of New Vegas. Sure, there were still big bugs eating people, and raiders could still technically invade your home and kill you, but it's progress, I guess. Anyway, the NCR had one of its biggest settlements called Shady Sands. You travel there in the very first Fallout game shortly after its opening. And everything I just mentioned are from games that Bethesda themselves did not develop, by the way. Remember that Bethesda didn't make Fallout, they bought the IP from its owners, and that's how Fallout 3, 4, and 76 exist. As well as this new TV show, the original games were also not first or third person shooters, Bethesda did that as well. Most people will tell- No, 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 no. Holy fuck. This dude is a synthetic man clone. Really? Really? Uh, it's, it's okay, Spec. Don't worry about it. Really? <laughs> Holy fuck. I, you know what? Instead of hearing the reiterated same fucking garbage these people say. Before I end the stream. Because I'm not raging or anything. I'm just I'm just saying. This is the same boring repetitive crap they're going to say over and over again. Don't listen to these fucking people. Just don't. It's These type of people only give a fuck about bumping up their numbers. That's That's all the fucks they give. That's it. In any way they can do it by fucking falsifying shit. It's not worth your time. It really fucking isn't. Yeah, to dunk on them and do videos like I'm doing? Yeah, go for it. But honestly, this is they're reiterating the same crap again? Come on. Come on. Did you guys even play the fucking games? Probably fucking not. They are. They are, David. You would be surprised how many there are. It's absolutely amazes me. Why? I just, I don't understand. 
yeah, it's, it's it's just for the sake of hating for views, not their own opinion. It's just that, oh, 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 I hate this because it's uh supposedly woke and supposedly retcons this. But when I have good, when I, when I bring my reasons, they're full of shit. Fake as fuck. Anyway. Just it, it it upsets me that even people like this even exist. Even for the fanboys, even these type of people exist. Even just extremist behavior is what really pisses me off. <laughs> That's what these type of people need to be gatekeeped out of their fucking hobbies. Because all they're going to do, all they're going to do is profit it from fucking misery that, you know, an obvious problem that needs to be fixed, but they're going to blow it out of the water. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for stopping by the stream. I, I can't do it anymore. I can't. This, this, this is fucking retardation on a different level that I just, I can't. I can't. I can't. But you know what, though, guys? Like I always say, thank you for stopping by the stream, and hopefully I'll see you guys next weekend with some more content. If you guys did enjoy it, you know, leave a like and comment in the comment section. I was like talking to you guys. But you know what, though, guys? I'll see you guys in the next stream, and uh, I got to get started on some videos for you guys. So you know what? I'll see you guys in the next one. Later, fam.